Hello, welcome back to the Sonic Movie Show, the only show that's about Sonic news, movie news, and Sonic movie news. My name is Ethan, and with me here, really, he's the only one left. We're the last of us, is Devin. It was either him or me. That's true. That's true. And it's, <laughs> it's me. Um, yes, on today's episode, we are reviewing the HBO's The Last of Us, season one, starring Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. Mm-hmm. We watched the whole thing. Final episode aired this week of that we're recording on. It'll be about a week away from when, you know, this episode goes live. It gives people time, you know, to like yep. catch up. You know, I'm sure there's a couple I, people who are. Can I immediately it. go on a tangent? Can I immediately yeah. go on a tangent? I respect the websites. Well, okay. I respect the people that work on the websites. I know they're owned by shitty management now. And I understand if you gotta do it because they say you gotta do it, then you gotta do it. So no hatred on the people writing these, but I see Kotaku and Gizmodo hours after the episode goes live doing articles about the episodes okay fine i don't need to click them on twitter but their screenshots are spoiling and they'll be like oh this goofy scene from the last episode may or last you know in the, in the last Whatever episode was from is. the game right and it's like they show it and i'm like come on it would dude, it was like it. that during game of thrones i like, bet i bet every every sunday or whenever it came out if I didn't get a chance to watch it, I just told myself I'm not opening Twitter. I'm not even I'm muting it. I'm just, or I would just, yeah, make mute words of just Game of Thrones. So just, it made it impossible um, because yeah, or people are live tweeting it and the people are retweeting it that I follow. And I'm like, what? and sometimes they don't do the hashtags, you know, and I, I mean? get like it, maybe it's exciting in the moment, but like, yeah, not everyone is, you know, available at nine o'clock uh, uh, Eastern time yeah. on a Sunday night. Oh, what always know? makes me <laughs> mad is critical role will like live tweet their stuff and like bro your episodes start at 10 p.m and they're four hours yeah. long and like they they had to go on defense mode because they always do a, a, a um hashtag that you can mute and it's literally critical spoilers you know i get it but like they showed art for a character that was replacing a, ca- uh, a player's character who died early on uh-huh. and they showed the the art this was drawn this you know this is a and I'm like, I didn't see the episode yet. I'm like, okay, well, now I know he's a little, you know, gnome <laughs> with chisels. Yeah. And I mean, and granted, so, granted, at least we, we've know. both played Last of Us or have a, at least a general knowledge of the story. Yeah. But still, we weren't sure if, like, they were going to change the ending or something yeah. different's going to happen. Because yeah, there has yeah. been some things that I wouldn't say significantly different, but there's some changes made to make me think that they could take this in a different direction. I would almost yeah. respect it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. But uh, just on the Game of Thrones thing, I'm going through those books still. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just get spoilers all the time. Like just names, whether they live or die. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I know X, X Y, and Z yeah. all die. But like, it's such a cultural thing that like, it'll be a part of a punchline. Oh, just like the blah, blah, blah and Game of Thrones. I'm like, I don't right. know if you if you pronounced her name wrong or if there just happens <laughs> to be two Starks with the name that's... Sounds very similar. Uh, whatever. I guess she dies. I guess great. And now I know that. You know what I mean. And I can see The Last of Us getting like that, considering if we can stop bitching about things, it's popularity and like just week over week, its ratings have been going up and up. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think it. I forgot the number was, or I think I. The final it episode almost chat. doubled the first episode's already strong ratings. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, According to Jeff Keighley. <laughs> so, but he he's in the game a little bit with uh, the breaking news. But yeah, episode one was four point seven million, and then uh, by episode nine, the last episode, eight point two million. Yeah, doubled. Yeah, that's crazy. And I mean, the episode five had the early premiere, which had eleven point six million, um, because of the Super Bowl, which was a good call on them oh. to be like, nah, you get it early. Um, right, right, right. Half of it, like. Not half of America, but almost uh, over one third of America does watch the Super Bowl uh, live, so. which is insane. Which yeah. is insane. They should have done the entire halftime was the episode. Imagine that. That would that would have been cool. For Imagine me. that. Um, Imagine that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess we want to review the whole thing. Um, we're gonna at one point, you know, go episode by episode. But I want to begin by asking you, Devin. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. both of us played the video game. I played the PlayStation 3 version, then the PS4 version. I have not touched the PlayStation 5 version. And there's no PS6, 7, or 8th, or 9th versions yet, but I'm sure there will be. Um, right. <laughs> I know you played the PlayStation 4 version. We both played the game, and we know it, you know, a good amount. But uh, what do you think about the show, and specifically how it 
relates to the games in terms of is it better or worse in what regards yeah i mean i it's so tough to compare i mean with us doing all these video game movie reviews for example like it's really hard to compare sometimes because it's two different mediums right how you make a game and uh, how you tell a story in a game is completely different than how you tell it in a movie um but i will say i think I'm not going to say the show is better or the game is better, but I will say I think the the themes or at least the things you're supposed to take away from The Last of Us, I think the show does a better job of telling you that than the game does, uh, specifically when it comes to, um, you know, humans uh, can be bad <laughs> or that... Uh, Love can make you do a lot of things, both good and bad. Uh, I think those are the big thing. I mean, it's like the big motif, I feel like, of Last of Us. It's about love. It's about uh, uh, losing people and then doing whatever it takes to save people. Uh, and also, I feel like, um, yeah, making you feel bad, too. Like, I know one thing in the games that we've always talked about, one issue we have with it is, like, and Neil Druckmann has specifically said that he wants you to feel bad when you're killing people in the game and you really don't because you're like, this is fun I, or I have to kill these people to get past this level. Can I just this, interject real yeah. quick and just say, we're going to just to tell people we're going to spoil everything. I'm about assuming it. if you're so clicking like, this, I'm assuming yeah. you're okay with yeah, spoilers because yeah, yeah. this is too hard to not spoil. So, uh, yeah. sorry, but yeah, then the show, like this makes me feel bad that when, when Joel hurts someone, or if Joel gets hurt, I feel even worse. Um, but I feel like this does a better job of hitting the the main themes or the questions or the things you're supposed to think about. And that's why I will say I think The Last of Us TV show, I think, is better at doing the story stuff than the game in a much shorter time frame, in a much, much more accessible way, because let's be real, not many people can play uh, who maybe don't play video games normally probably would struggle a lot playing Last of Us, even on its easiest yeah. mode. Yeah. So, even with that's why I'm a fan of this stuff. this show even happening in the first place because of that reason. Was like my dad's a big uh, uh, like into zombies and he liked The Walking Dead and stuff. And I've been telling him about this. He's gonna be watching it probably soon because I told him just to binge it. You know, get get HBO Max for a month and you can binge this. Yeah. I think you'll really like it. And I, I already know he's not going to be able to play the game. So for me, it's I feel like this was a good move. Um, but at least for uh, overall, though, I feel like it's, it's hit the hype. I'll say that. But. Yeah. Um, obviously, I think it was very good. What I think it, it does is is unique for a video game. Um, so f I have a couple points here. Uh, here's my edgy point that I've always uh -oh. kind of had <laughs> uh, going on that like, is not unsurprising. I don't think too many people would, you know, uh, th raise a pitchfork at me for saying it. Um, it all just depends on how you phrase it, if you're trying to be an asshole or not. But I don't think The Last of Us is the greatest story in video games. It's I love the video game. It was one of my favorites. I bought it at launch day, along with a PlayStation Vita. Um, came Got them same day. <laughs> got the Vita on The Last of Us Day. Um, and I definitely tried to uh, remote play uh, PlayStation 4 Last of Us at some point um, on the Vita. I don't I love the game a lot. So when I say I don't think it's the best story in gaming or anything like that, it's not coming from, you know, uh, the, some sort of fanboy thing. Um, but what The Last of Us had going for it was that its story was the cutscenes were directed very much like prestige TV and it was just performed very well. It was acted very right. well. So that's what people gravitate to. People really like prestige TV. People love The Sopranos. The Sopranos would make a terrible video game. It makes a great TV show if you can linger on people's faces as they talk about killing my cousin Tommy or whatever they do in Sopranos. <laughs> I never saw it, but you understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> um, so I don't think it's the greatest story in gaming. I actually think kind of like the, the theme and messaging are very basic, um, but they're basic in a way that can relate to a lot of people that aren't very... Um, uh, literary like uh adept they don't think about themes they'll watch a movie and don't realize that there's a message or a metaphor they just see the aliens and they're like i like the you know they don't know that it means something even though it could be very obvious to right. people that pay attention to this stuff or read books um so therefore it reached a lot of people and i think that's great i like the last of us i think it's fantastic um 
so this show, uh, I think obviously makes it more accessible for a lot of people, but I think it does too for, for video games. The first time I think I can say this about a video game adaptation, whether it be a movie, TV show, etc., is it creates a canon. So you played The Last of Us, and I played The Last of Us. How many times did Joel get shot? It's a different answer for both of us. How many times right. were you get seen? How many times was he get beaten up? Obviously, if he dies, we, can't, we can say that that didn't happen because you reload. How many times did Ellie almost get choked out? You know, we, we play, you played through the video game, I played through the video game, and it's a very linear story-driven video game, so we hit right. all the same beats. There's nothing to miss besides, you know, small interactions that they might have. You know, with the joke book, there's or a couple... Or maybe you didn't pick up an item or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, you didn't read this note, more. and you didn't know about right. it. Exactly. But when we get to the end, we talk about it, we try to establish this canon of like, okay, he never got shot. You know, or something like that. He's a badass. You know, people do that with, you know, Solid Snake. You were never seen in Metal Gear Solid in the canon because it's cooler that way. This makes an actual canon. You know what I mean? What you played is more real than the thing we collectively decided what happened because it was real. Um, the show creates what a lot of people can now point to is like what actually happened in the sense of like how well was Joel at shooting a gun? I was really good at shooting the guns in The Last of Us. Someone else might not be. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I find that very very fascinating because it's a show that follows the game's story almost to a T. It follows it beat by beat. Um, it skips a lot of the combat encounters because it's not a video game, and that would probably be boring after a while. But I find it very fascinating that uh, it's able to like be a literally a retelling of a game. And most of... most. Most, if not every video game movie we've reviewed here has not been that. It's been an adaptation on the ideas. It has not right, been, right. here's the game, beat for beat. Right. Here's the story. That we've you seen so I mean? far. That we've I, seen so far. Russian and Clank one I think we have on oh, our okay. list coming up. Is to be fair, be that. <laughs> it is, that's going to be beat for beat because I, pl well, I played the game and I know they just literally use scenes from the movie for cutscenes. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but no, no, I think this is at least the... Uh, and a, uh, going back to just like how many people have seen this and we, we've been talking about a lot on this show for the last couple of years with like Sonic the Hedgehog and this, the Mario movie I'm sure is going to make bank with like video game annotations being uh, successful, like financially really successful. There was ones that were successful, like the Resident Evil movies and whatnot. But in terms of like actually being adaptations, like you're saying, uh, they're not just having Resident Evil in name and then going in a different direction or maybe just having elements of the game, but not really being a beat by beat thing. Um, Last of Us, I think is one of the, probably in the, like in this is, I guess era is a very successful video game adaptation. That's not afraid to be based off the game and be doing what the game does. How many times have we watched like mid two thousands, video game movies where they're just afraid almost to like be what the game is or tell yeah. what the game is because they're yeah. for whatever reason. And you um, still see that some of them today, the uncharted movie right. did not follow any of the games and it almost didn't want to do some of the uncharted stuff almost out of the, well, this is a little silly guys. You know what I mean? So yeah, right. this, like, this, yeah. this felt and, brave enough just to, to just to do it. Right. And even for the people who have played it and, I'm still like on the edge of my seat watching like that's one hard to pull off too. Um, but yeah, I feel like uh, just overall, like this is, uh, um, I mean, even before that, like when they first announced that they were doing this and before they think they even had cast. Um, and they said that, uh, the, the folks from, uh, Chernobyl were making it. Um, that's when I got like, for me, I was like, Oh, this is going to, this has potential to be really good. Um, because I watched Chernobyl, one of my favorite shows. Uh, Craig Mazin, who, who was uh, one of the co-creators on this, Neil Druckmann did work on this as well. But Craig Mazin knows how to like just create worlds that are fucking eerie, uncomfortable, scary, without ever really showing that much. Like If you think about it, how often we're infected really shown in this series. There's moments when all of a sudden they're there, but then they're not at all. But like they show enough to keep you like, they could come out. That's what made Game of yeah. Thrones so good as TV, I think, is because so many characters died that you really don't know 
who is safe. They're like, oh, you're ha- they're having a dialogue in a room by themselves. That is just scary <laughs> because like sure. this guy could just pull out a, a crossbow or something and just pop them and that'd be it. And that's the name of the game. Um, the name of the so one, I think HBO was a perfect place for this show. If this was on Amazon or Netflix, I'd be a little bit more concerned. But like once I heard yeah. that HBO was involved, Craig Mason was involved, I was like, this is going to be good. And I, and I feel like they really hit the hype. And I'm just, it's crazy to me to hear people in the general public talking about the last of us talking about Joel talking about Ellie, like for us gamers, like, yeah, everyone, everyone talked about it when it came out, but to hear it at like a general public level where like, you know, coworkers are talking about it. Uh, you hear in passing, you're seeing it on Twitter, you're seeing it everywhere. Like it's, it's just crazy. And I feel like this is, you know, uh, I mean, I guess, is this the first TV show? that Because we haven't really covered TV shows on here, but it makes me think, is this the first video game adaptation TV show that is successful for a video game? Um, or I guess video we define what show? successful means. Um, it's definitely by numbers and then critically and acclaimed. Yeah, I mean, right now, it's going on, there's that Nier Automata anime, and I don't know if it's dubbed yet or subbed even. Well, I mean, I guess to be like, fair, there was some that with uh, the Game Awards there where they had the... Um, there's yeah, arcane reviews. Yeah. yeah but like i'm talking about just I think those are like terms world of, of stuff both critically acclaimed and uh a, a big audience yeah and it's yeah, like you're yeah, saying uh, you were saying before we got on call game of thrones is a was a cultural phenomenon i would argue this is i don't know if it's there yet it's getting really damn close but like the fact that like i can probably talk to someone on the street now about the last of us and they might not play the game but they can know the story right and i think that means it's do it did its job right yeah yep but yeah um you touched early uh in this episode on um you know it's showing its themes better than what the game did and you know the the, the sake when joel kills people it's not as impactful in the video game that's 100 percent true um you know we could go we're gonna go episode by episode but i just want to say that like you know when the game ended and uh there was that conversation people had on uh, did he do the right thing or not? Right. Um, and you can convince yourself he did the right thing because, you know, what if it was your child and and you make your excuses of like, and you oh, also you play the game as Joel. So right. like you, you have can... that you have that bias. You, when you watch a story, right. uh, read a story or play a story that follows a character, you are like five times more likely to empathize and agree with their position, even if they're bad people. That's why I think stories that are following a villain are fascinating because you're just willing to like agree with them. That's why people can watch breaking Ben and be like, yeah, he was a, he was a cool guy. He was a good guy. Like that dude was an asshole (laughs) who freaked out all the time (laughs) and got people killed. You know what I mean? He's not a good guy. But people think the Heisenberg and Brian Canston's character is cool, right? And like that happens with Joel. But for the show here, I don't think the conversation is as nebulously like, oh, I don't know, is he good or bad? I think a lot of people are like, he did something real bad. Because guess what? They show him being a school fucking shooter when he goes to that hospital in a way that when I'm playing the game and I'm like ducking down and I'm popping out, because remember, the game was all uh, single shot um, guns, like they were semi automatic, or just you had to reload after each one. There was no fully right. automatic weapons. The hospitals, when you get them, so you're popping off like it's uncharted. You know what I mean? So it feels different. And yeah, like there's there's combat back and forth, but like I never got the like, you know, because I'm not seeing his face, I'm seeing his ass half the time. You know what I mean? As he's crouching down, walking around, I'm not really seeing that like just that school shooter look, you know what I mean? That, that, that mass shooter look that he had in the show. Um, I mean, it's almost Terminator. Like, I mean, I saw, uh, um, uh, I forgot who who it was on Twitter. Um, but like someone being like, Oh, like it looks so inspired by like the first Terminator movie when he goes into the police station and just slaughters everybody. And there's no like hesitation. There's no like sparing, like a guy's already injured. He finishes the job on every single one of them. Um, and yeah, Joel is has that, uh, or, or Pedro Pascal's Joel does a great job of just showing that thing that just switches, and it's just, yeah, mer- like just like just goes for just sees red, and then it's over. Like spoilers until the, until for the job all Last of Us, everything. 
the second game really wants you to know that he was not a, he, he was a bad person. But like be, maybe because it was seven years apart for a lot of people, you know what I mean? Or a lot of people that, you know, like they just really empathize with the character. They still feel shocked and violated the fact that Joel right. dies in the second and they, game. That's, what, the that's what's great about that game is that it it it's playing on those feelings yeah. until it makes you play through the other side. Right. Uh, and granted, Abby I still think that game is a little too long. Joel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, they need to have, they need to, to give enough time for both characters. Right. Right. Like right. Abby is, Abby is all the things you like about Joel. She has them all. You know what I mean? There's but why literally, like I didn't really notice it when we did our review, but first. like, uh, when we did our review way back when that game came out in 2020, mm-hmm. well, forever ago, um, where like literally like the way Abby holds, I forgot who she's holding, but holds a, a oh Lev. one person, yeah, yeah. It's the same way that Joel holds uh, um, Sarah Ellie right beginning during or oh, yeah oh. or that too, right? Yeah. It's the same. It's literally like <laughs> yeah, purposely the, the, the parallels are, are very very obvious. I mean that's what yeah. I've actually so in the, in that review of the Last of Us Part Two that we did with our friend David, only episode he's ever been on. Um, yes. He's a very special guest. <laughs> he's, he's he only he's, he only shows up when he needs to. Uh, right. <laughs> I wanted to be very contrarian because I just I don't like the idea of just it's very dumb to I don't know how to phrase this in a great way. You know, whenever when something's really popular and everyone likes it, you know, whatever. Like something is very good and everyone likes it. I don't want to just go with the flow, with go, go with the flock and just suck its dick. You know what I mean? I think it's okay to be a little challenge critical. something. Right. Or and like I wanted to do that. Right. And I've dialed some of that back down where I'm like, because back then I was like, it's very, and it is very obvious, but it's very obvious. You know, the cycle of revenge, we're showing, we're being shown two parts of it. Ellie's whole journey here is getting revenge. Abby's whole journey in the game is after she got it. And it's the the cycle, and then but then it comes back around, and you know, and this and that, like it never ends. They're both yeah. on the same cycle; they're just at different parts. You know what I mean? Like I felt that was so obvious, and maybe it is so obvious, but like I still think it's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I still <laughs> right. think I still I, a lot of even when games, you know it's coming, you're on the edge of your seat, and there's it's, it's a lot tough of video games don't off. do that. A lot of video games don't do don't have a thing to say at all, even story based ones. Does Resident Evil Four have anything really to say? Probably not. It's fun though. It's awesome, and I love it. It's right. one of the greatest. That's why you're playing the video game, right? right? You know, you're, you're not the game the is fun. You can have a great story, and if the game isn't fun, many people aren't going to even finish your yeah. story. But so. um, <laughs> everyone, yeah, they, they they could not. A lot of people. I don't want to say everyone. I don't want to generalize like that. People will get really mad. A lot of people just could not fathom the idea that Joel deserved to be murdered. Maybe no one deserves to be murdered. I'm not going to sit here and, right. and argue back and forth but like within that world people don't a lot of people didn't realize didn't think that joel deserved what was coming for him considering what he did <laughs> you know what i mean considering what he did and the, he has a justification well so does she and so does ellie going back and blah 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 so when you get to this that's what i like about this show is that like you really have to have the blinders on not to see how fucked up that was at the ending yeah you know what I mean? You can't just like, uh, Mario smiles and he jumps on all these creatures. It doesn't matter. It's a video game. <laughs> he got this star. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know what I mean? But like, I watched that Mario movie trailer, right? And like a missile's coming at him on his Mario Kart and he jumps off and it blows up the Mario Kart and he falls on like a Koopa shell and he pops in his shell and he throws it and the car blows up. He murked someone's ass. He used someone as a weapon and they're dead right. now. Will we, you know, I'm, I'm joking here, but like, you know, <laughs> people are willing to th- have suspense of disbelief when it comes to video game violence in terms of how it relates to a story, because what was canon? Did Joel really kill a lot of people when you play through the game? You could skip a lot of the combat in The Last of Us Part 1. Most of the combat you could skip was on the zombies, though, on the clickers, not the people. But like, did Joel brutally murder everyone? We don't know, because what you did was different than mine. So we developed this this mythology on what the game actually was, what the story actually was with what this character did, how we want it to feel like, you know what I mean? He wasn't that badass as we wanted him to think of. And I like the fact that the show gives you that definitive, Hey, this is what that, this is what they think actually happened in a way that can be on TV. Right. Um, and who knows me? Uh, 
and I know we get, we've given a lot of spoilers, by the way. I hope people who maybe didn't play the game are watching this. They're like, wait, what? Joel dies? Uh, <laughs> I think that might just, not ha- that might not happen. So like, who knows? I don't want to like say for sure. Uh, just go to back to Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were able to avoid spoilers between seasons of the show because reading a book is not something a lot of people want to do. And the people that do read books, I don't feel like are as keen of giving away spoilers as people that play video games. That'll be like, oh, my God, dude, Joel dies. Like half my coworkers that never played the video games because they're on Xbox or whatever, like they don't know that. But then someone said that, and they're thinking he dies at the end of the show. And I'm like, I don't want to say he doesn't, but I think the ending's more cool than just someone dies at the end. You know what I mean? Right. Um, no, there's been people doing like the golf club emoji and or and, and golf ball emojis. Like, and I'm like, fuck y'all. Like, just hey, let them, let that, these people like. Yeah. Like uh uh um and Bryn and Bryn uh you know she has watched me play the games I wouldn't loosely watch but she didn't even remember the ending, and so like I knew it was coming and I'm like oh based off how many episodes are left I'm pretty sure it's gonna end how the game ended but I I didn't say what to what degree yeah uh and I don't know if she remembers if Joel dies well good because guess what and I'm hoping if that's people, the case because she, she needs to feel that she needs to feel that yeah I uh, yes if people. Uh, Here's if I, it happens at least. I wasn't spoiled on the sequel, but remember there was that leak that came out a month before the game came out, and like I really try to avoid so much, but I had this inclination that he dies based off the uproar people had, and when someone fucking tweeted, I didn't know the Last of Us Part Two was a golfing game, then it just clicked in my head. It just clicked in my head. I'm like, someone's oh my getting God. something involved. Someone's getting Once murdered with a golf club, <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean. That's not, but it would have blew. Honestly, if that wasn't the case, and it blew my mind that there was like areas in the game where you could mini golf, I would have been like, "Oh my god, that's been insane." Or there's like one of the weapons you have constantly is just a golf club. Yeah, that would have been super silly, but it would have been funny. funny. Um, <laughs> um, um, yeah, but more games should we'll like turn their levels into mini golf stuff. There's an RPG called Dark Cloud Two, and when you finished a dungeon, it turned into a mini golf course. <laughs> I was like, oh, that'd be awesome. You reuse that ass. Reuse that stuff. You know what I mean? Reuse the assets. Not you're not reuse that ass. Reuse, reuse that the ass. assets. If you have it, reuse um, it. Um, and Joel yeah, in the uh, movie, unlike or in Joel in the TV show, unlike you know a lot of male video game characters, has an ass. It's true. You know, it's true. They're not afraid. Uh, do you want to just quickly before we go into each episode, just talk about? I just want to talk about two, our two main stars, Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. What? What? Give them a grade. Like in terms of playing characters that, you know, a lot of people have in high regard, uh, you know, obviously like we, we've said, we're big fans of last of us, but you know, we don't see it as like maybe the, the, the God tier, the, this is the best video game of all time levels still think they're, you know, fantastic. And I always like to do my Joel voice cause he talks like this in the game. Ellie, get outside and get your horse. We need to get out of here. Uh, you know, I like, I like that shit. But like, what do yeah. you think about um, Pedro, Pedro and Bella? And Bella, yeah. Um, I go back and forth on whether or not I think they're better than their video game counterparts. And some aspects, I think Pedro is a much better Joel than um, the Troy Baker version of it in the games, just because I feel like there's a lot more. It's easy when you know you're a real person and you can just constantly be emoting. As opposed to like the video games where they really have to make an effort to animate, you know, emotions when it can come so natural. It could be a random take that no one thought of, you know, when they were just out to take 18 of this and he just does some face <laughs> that's different off the you know cuff and that wasn't planned. So it's easier to then have the best parts than what's a planned story when you, you know, mo-capping out for cutscenes. But in a lot of ways, I feel like he was better. Um, his take is different. And I appreciate that. He's, his take is different than the Troy Baker one. Um, when it comes to Bella, though, I both prefer the Ashley Johnson uh, voice and mannerisms. However, in Last of Us Part 1, and I'm only talking about that game, um, Ellie doesn't seem like a real kid in the game. And Bella does. The Ellie in the video game seems like a out-of-time like kid uh she looks too much like a kid kid and not like a kid that lives in that world or just a person that lives in that world um a lot a lot of video game ellie in that first game 
doesn't feel like a real person, uh, even though like the performance might be. Um, whereas Bella Ramsey obviously is a real person, and a lot of how she reacts and stuff feels way more real than what video game Ellie was. Um, but yes, it's hard to say back and forth. I think they're both excellent picks. I remember way back in the day when there was a Last of Us movie. That's in big quotes because there wasn't. Um, there was a Last of Us movie like, oh, Bella Ramsey, the girl from Game of Thrones. She'd be a perfect pick for for Ellie. <laughs> um, and maybe not knowing this person being like, I don't like that idea. I back then was like, you know, I think it's dumb that they recast. You know, it's this is the acting video game. Have the two people that acted as the characters play them. Uh, Troy Baker's too pretty, and Ashley Johnson's too <laughs> tall and, and old, and she's you know not a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like it that doesn't work. I get it. Especially now, ten years later, seeing um her be the mom, and I'm like, there's no way they could have made you look like a kid, even if they wanted to have you. Like, there's right. no way. Obviously, um. But so yeah, I think they were perfect picks. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a Pedro Pascal fan. And I'm glad that the the that after the Mandalorian, he's gotten his due. I think. Um, and we call this era of um, TV and movie <laughs> dome because he was in Wonder Woman 1984 as right. uh, the Pascal Nissan. <laughs> Why not? Sure, I like Pascal that. Pascal Nissan. Okay, <laughs> it's hard to say. I'm not going to even try saying it because um, I'm going to butcher it. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I mean he's. One, it's just funny watching like interviews because he did like hot ones and uh, he's just a goofy dude. Uh, and then seeing him play this and I just forget it's him. That's how good of a job he is, is that he gets into character and I forget I'm watching the dude who talks about uh, uh, like he's just like if you watch any of his interviews, he's just always laughing or smiling, being goofy. I loved him in uh, the Nicolas Cage movie there. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, in that and just seeing this i'm like i forget it's him i think especially when you're a star actor or like when you're a familiar face and you've been in a lot of things last you know a couple years and you know uh you have to do like a more serious role i feel like this when it happens it's so hard sometimes to take that out of like sometimes i see tom cruise as tom cruise right like i don't see uh him as the character he's trying to play even maverick to a degree i'm like no it's just tom cruise saving the day uh, when this, it's like, I forget it's him, and that's a good thing. That means he's doing a very good job. Uh, yeah. Especially when, like I said, if you're in a lot of stuff recently, granted Mandalorian's wearing a helmet. But yeah, he's been in the Nicolas Cage movie. He's been in Game of Thrones. Uh, I know he's been on a couple other things, Narcos and whatnot Oh yeah, uh, as well. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's he does a really good job. And uh, yeah, I, I do agree. He plays kind of a different Joel, but I think he plays a much more... Uh, yeah, he just has has a different aura to him, but it, it's it's. I'm not gonna really say like, you know, uh, it's hard to compare them just because a video game versus, uh, once again, mediums. It's hard to compare mediums, uh, yeah. painting to animation. You know, like you can't really compare them fairly. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. Yeah, Bella Ramsey. Like, I feel like Ellie was gonna be the hard character to play just because of you know what we see in the game and uh, the mannerisms in the game. But yeah, she has her own way of doing things and it's just good. And yeah, you feel when she's angry, you feel angry. I love like they have both of them have great chemistry too. That helps a lot. Uh because if they didn't have good chemistry, it would have shown for like because they have really intimate scenes. Uh, I love the uh the humor in it, like when it's really fucking depressing and they have the pun book. And I forgot that was in the games at That's all right. because it probably wasn't as memorable in the games. A lot of but... it was missable. There right. are moments you um, walk up and press triangle on a, a street lamp and she pops the book open. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't really remember it in the games uh, or in the game. So, but now I remember like all the, 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 the jokes, you know, and then I like that over time, Pedro Pascal, uh, his Joel like shows, you know, the different, he's warming up to her first. It's like, I don't want to like fuck you basically to her like very early on. Yep. And uh, granted, in the game, they could, like, do that on a much longer basis, right? And they only had nine episodes to do, and I feel like they did it at a good rate where it felt believable. Um, and also, I know that a lot of, based off what they showed in the, uh, I don't know if you watched the little, like, they did, like, a 30-minute documentary of making The Last of Us uh, as well. 
um, outside of the stuff they showed at the end of each episode, like they oh, do on okay. HBO well, I didn't shows. Watch, didn't watch that thing then. It was like it was like twenty four to thirty minutes. Um, but yeah, like they when when they're out in the snow, they're actually out in snow. You know, they're actually out in the elements. They didn't, and I think that's what makes the world so visually good looking and feels real is because you know they put them out in the actual elements. The sets are great too. But uh, yeah, like they shout out for both of them for also like doing. You know, they could have going back to our conversation uh, off air about Marvel movies and how everything's in a blue screen room nowadays. And that's nothing wrong with that, but there's something about shooting. I think like on sites in the elements that you have to respect. So it's hard to tell that someone's feeling cold when the actor is not cold, you know? Right. Um, yeah. You know, you can, you can forget to shiver a little bit, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, no, I feel like they were great. Bella Ramsey is also 19 in real life um yeah so like she's able to play a kid you know what i mean um so because i know there was like oh is bella ramsey gonna be recast for the last was part two's season you know six yeah i mean i will question that because she does look young enough obviously she's the same age as the character so like right so it's it's it'll be fine we'll once we get to it or they'll find a way to just make it work you know one way or the other put her on stilts (laughs) <laughs> there you go yeah i think they'll well we'll get into that i think at the end of like just loose predictions of the next couple sure, sure. at least season two um so i think there'll That's, be multiple uh, seasons but well so they've um commit they've only been renewed for one more season but they have spoken and said that they don't think that the second game is more is one season they think it's more than one season yeah um and they've also only been uh contracted um like their relationship with hbo naughty dog's relationship with hbo only covers the first two games it's not going to do a game of thrones thing where like they make up an ending because there isn't a part three yet or at all um yeah but uh let's go episode by episode a little briefly just talk about each and every one of them we'll start with episode number one when you're lost in the darkness i know this episode um was two episodes initially it was supposed to be two episodes. Okay. It was an hour um, and 20 minutes, I remember correctly. It was really like it was, long. It was, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, um, the break point for when the episode is supposed to end, first episode was supposed to end, was uh, after Joel, um, like, you, you, there is that little kid who was infected, and so they euthanized them, and then we later cut to people burning bodies. When one of the people pulls the mask on and it's Joel, that was supposed to be the cut there. Mm, um, interesting. If you didn't know, I I'm, I like that. I like when TV shows have that like extra long episode at either the start or the end. There's something about it, it makes it more of like a like short movie or whatnot. It just makes it feel a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I don't know good closer like, opener. I think it was good that they did it uh, all this whole thing all in one because by the end of this episode, the premise is set. Joel is taking Ellie. Now, yes, there's this woman named Tess with them as well. She ain't going to last very long. You can tell by the box art and the, the key art on HBO, and she ain't on that. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know that, like, it's, it's the premise is set from that episode onward, which I think is good as opposed to, like... The journey is set. If, if you don't know anything about The Last of Us, right, and you watch that first episode back in their minds when it was two different episodes and it ends with him doing the bodies. It's like, okay, so does it take place in town? Does it play, you know, like, well, like what does he, does he, what does he do? You know what I mean? Like the concept is very different than what the premise of the game might tell yeah. you. You know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to remember th- too, like from like just talking about like what, what they show in this first episode, how long into the game are we? Like how many very hours early. do you think? I'm trying to remember like by the time they leave, you're like, Okay, so here's the thing. We do the play as Sarah in the beginning. That stuff was pretty much beat for beat, although it was longer in the show because they show her life a little bit more, right? Yeah, a little bit more um, backstory. And then uh, when we cut to 2033 in the video game, because remember, it's 2013 that the outbreak happens on the same year the game came out. 20 years later, the show, it's 2003 into 2023 because they want it to be this year, you know? I think that that's just my assumption. They Loosely, want it to be this year. Yeah. Um, Remember, Joel and Tess uh, fight a bunch of people when they're chasing down uh, the dude that owes them their guns. In the game, they were needed guns from this guy. In the show, it was a battery. 
um, which I think makes a lot more sense because the game, my impression of them is they're like warlords. Why do they need so many guns? I don't, right. I don't really fully understand that in the they're game. They're not part of like a resistance group or right. something like that they, either. So they were like the dealers in in Boston. That's that's kind of how I understood it. But um, you fight all those people, and then when you get Ellie. There's still a lot of zombie stuff in fighting, so they cut all that out for the show. So it's probably longer, but I don't feel like it was too too long. I don't know, maybe like two hours, something, something like that. There was, there was stealth stuff in the rain, you know what I mean? When they with Ellie yeah. and, and Tess, um, and the the the, stuff, the spotlights and stuff that was kind of tricky. But um, I liked the episode. Uh, I it was a good starting yeah. episode. Like I know, like people who I told about to like, Hey, you should watch this. They're like, you know, we were, they were skeptical or maybe didn't like zombie stuff or whatever for a reason. They're like, Oh shit, this could be like, this seems hype. Like I'm like, it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, right away I was like, okay, great. Fantastic start. Thank you very much. I can't wait for next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so oh, I did was... like, uh, I Sorry. actually want to talk about the one little note that I know, uh, saw on Twitter. Um, so I don't want to say like, I saw this and I, you know, your original this detail, uh, observation. Yeah. Uh, because like one difference that they, they show in this to it more into the, the second episode is that the infected are different from the game where it isn't just almost traditional zombies in the sense that if they bite you, that's it. Um, and it, in spores were the big thing in the game that like you can get it from spores, not just being bit. Um, and this is specifically just being bit, which is fine. I like that change because, uh, uh, you know, I, I just feel like it was easier to film. I get it. So, and just um, the idea of spores in real life, they would go up a lot. I feel like, and they would spread too thin or like either they're, it's like the microplastics in our blood where it's just, there's a little bit everywhere. Or there's like a lot of spaces where there's none in real life. I yeah. don't think it would make um, much but one sense. But one thing I noticed was, and they talk about it later on in the second episode, like I said, was um, how did the other people get infected if they didn't get bit? And it was like, oh, it was the pancakes they were making because it was like the the grain that they were using or whatever, which they talk about more, which I also liked. Usually I don't really uh, uh, care if like there needs to be like, how did the apocalypse start? Why did it start? It doesn't need to be like a direct answer or directly shown. But I did like kind of how they showed it the first couple episodes, how it kind of came loosely, and it was kind of like an intro thing. Um, and then you start picking up on those little things, like, oh, that's why the grandma got, you know, she changed, and why no one else did. And glad, uh, uh, you know, no one else ate the pancakes, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And I it makes more sense, cool. too. Like, it's spreading through food and not just... Because a lot of those early zombie movies, like, well, everyone just started biting each other, and it was crazy. You know, it's really easy to contain w- if you're if you're on the gun about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then um, with you know uh, what that they show with like the government throughout this, and I have uh, some uh, thoughts about like how they portray the government in this, which I actually really dig because they didn't really talk about this. I don't think in the game as much. Um, where like I feel like yeah, if it was spread by people biting, they would have just nuked it and called it a day. Um, and obviously what we've shown in real life with a quarantine that I feel like the idea of like people just biting each other and they just letting that happen is uh, not as believable. The idea of it spreading through like something we can't really see through food and whatnot is more scary anyways. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, second episode was called infected. Uh, this is eventually where Tess does die. This is where we get our big um, fighting the clickers, uh, you know, episode there in the small museum um, which I looked very similar to the the set in the game with the different display cases and whatnot. I um, thought that was very good. Uh, this is where we get a lot of our mistrust on on you know Ellie and they they do the thing like the thumbnail where we're, to keep us remembered on what the episodes were. We have the IMDb like season list on, and the second season's thumbnail for IMDb is Ellie sitting in sunlight while Tess is kind of in shadow a little bit. They had her sleep in the sun or in the spot where the sun can come down. And I'm pretty sure it's because like they later show like there's a whole bunch of infected lying just out in like a field or something like that. And as a cloud passes over, they're all rolling to keep with it because they don't like the sunlight. You know what I mean? So if she was infected, she might react a little bit. There's a lot of little touches like that in the show um, that I appreciated. 
And I kind of noticed that with this one here. Um, this is also where we get the idea that, oh, yeah, like there's just the underground network of the fungus. And so like when one of them reacts, it sends that synapse, you know, that that down the chain there. And that's how they all react. And they spread by literally detaching and then chasing after and then hopefully yeah, restarting. That is much scarier, too, than them just like being in random packs like that they can communicate from miles away like that so makes scary. it a little bit more dangerous and that you have to know what you're doing <laughs> yeah out there because in real life like one of the largest organisms on the planet is a fungus right and, like i don't know in the redwoods of california or it's in some place there is just these gigantic fucking like fungus underground fungus thing it's like that yeah. the coral reef and like a couple big trees <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so i that very believable that it would be like that um and like the other thing too like you play last of us part two there's a lot of ambushing clickers where you'll be walking it looks like someone just died stuck into the wall and then they turn and they just kind of get corroded over by the fungus in the wall and then they burst out and attack right the idea you don't know is which that, ones are gonna actually pop yeah up yeah or not <laughs> and the idea is that in the show when one of them is uh when it needs to reconnect or something like that, and it's no, it's fully turned. It just gets up to a wall and lets it spread like that, um, or onto the floor, which is which is kind of crazy. Easily reconnect to Wi-Fi. Yeah, I know Wi-Fi Seven, baby. It's they have no the more corner. McDonald's Wi-Fi anymore, so yeah, you have to yeah, make yeah, your yeah. own. Oh, <laughs> uh, the Starbucks Wi-Fi never turns off, even when they're closed. So, <laughs> what did you think of the episode? Yeah, no, I, it, it's good. I think it just it's setting up more of the world. It's world build. It's a world building episode um, that also has, uh, you know, Tess at the end uh, there dying and yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of shown that like the you know that it is easy to die in this world. That it isn't like you if you're just badass get enough. Yeah. yeah, if you get bit, it's over. And it's or happened you run in... several times in the show where like in the aftermath, someone just realizes they were bit several times in the show. Yeah. Right. Um. Um. But yeah, I, I thought just, it was I, a little I, weird. If I can just interject, I thought it was a little weird. <laughs> like, so they change it up in the game. They're being hunted down by people or whatever. Uh, Fedra, maybe. And Tess holds them off because, you know, she's going to die anyway. And the show here, it's infected. And, you know, there's that, that like, fumbling with the lighter and it's not working. And, like, the plan might not work and that thing. And when, very weird. Like, they do transmit something through mouth. Or it's something for, like that. It's, it's a or a tendrils. Yeah, that's how they actually like. It's like the roots that you see from actual fungus. So yeah, I dig it. It's fucking weird and uncomfortable, and that's the point. That that I really believe is more of a uh, 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 decision by um, uh, Craig Mazin because he likes to make you like. If you, I would honestly recommend Chernobyl. It's three episodes. I think they're all an hour oh, long. Really? Yeah, so I highly recommend it. And there's like one ep- one part in it that I've it's like top five for me, like most uncomfortable things I watch because of how good the makeup is and how good like just the just ugh, just makes you want to vomit <laughs> uh, uncomfortableness uh, in okay. that in that show. And yeah, I think I think I think it's dope. It's gross. It's it's weird. It's it, to me, it's more interesting than just a traditional zombie coming in and just trying to bite her face off that like it knows that she's already bitten and is almost like welcoming her, welcoming her into like, their it needs to like connect system. her to the thing or something. Yeah. 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 And it's just, it's and yeah, those tendrils coming out of the mouth, make it just Ugh. different than zombies. And actually I really like that. Um, oh, real quick before we move on to episode three, you mentioned this a little bit at the beginning of the episode is when they have a flashback and there's the woman who, um, uh, she's just a big fungus expert or something like she's a professor. Um, love that whole intro because at first off, it looks like some sort of fascist thing of like, why are these cops coming into a, to take her? And like, right. it really does feel like it's that type of thing, but no, they need her help. And when she finds out, you know, and everything and they ask her what she recommends, what they do. And she says, bomb, blow everyone up, blow us all up. And that's how you stop this. That's fucked real fuck right clearly right. clearly they didn't such uh, what they're like it's in it the, i think they said it was in like a rice farm or a grain farm of some sort yeah that, like all the people from that area and they was, yeah. and she knew yeah. right away that it's and then she was like i want to go spend time with my family even she knew like if you're either i'm getting bombed or we don't have much time left 
yeah. for this is a, and, a global you know, We pandemic. all know, as big near heads, the Obama plague with the nuke, it just makes it worse. You know what I mean? Then we all die. So probably, <laughs> probably you don't want to do the nukes. Um, episode three was called Long, Long Time, starring uh, Nick Offerman um, from uh, Parks and Recreation. A lot of people... <laughs> Um, first off, he makes a great bill, uh, just based off even what, like our perception of the character was from the video game. You know what I mean? He would have made a great bill in that particular role too, let alone this interpretation. A lot of people are saying he deserves an Emmy for his performance in this episode. And I can see it. Um, I was not expecting that from him. Like he was really freaking good in this episode. I think that's the power. Ugh, I don't want to say it like that. I think there's something special when you have a TV show where you're not, you know, and then you're able to, to, to really dial in on, on stories like this, um, where it's not the same characters in every episode where you're able to tell vignettes, so to speak, episode by episode. Cause that's what a lot of this, a lot of this felt like vignettes. Right. Um, so you can just have, this is the only episode you're in. So we're really going to make sure it's like about you and it's focused on you. And, and like, it means there's more pressure A-game. on you to like, you know, yeah, hit, hit every mark. Right. <laughs> absolutely. And it worked. You know what I mean? It, he was fantastic. I don't remember what the other actor's name was who played Frank. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm getting that. Uh, big though. change, obviously, in the game. Frank can't hung himself. You know what I mean? And Bill's just angry. You know what I mean? And he's an asshole. Um so they completely redid it in a way that's much better. Um, although you don't get, you know, to play with Bill, so to speak, like you do in the game where you're going through his town and killing zombies or killing the infected. But it's a TV show and that would have been fun to watch. But like, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, Murray um, uh, uh, Bartlett plays Frank. OK, yeah, I think they were great. I think they were fantastic. Um, For what else I, way he's been in, but uh, I've seen him before. For sure. Oh, White it's, Lotus is he was in. Okay. It's another popular show. Um, yeah, he's been a lot yeah. of lot of TV shows. I gotcha. Him just getting cancer <laughs> is like the other uh, like good. You know, like, that's a real fucking like outside of an uh, apocalypse. Like that's real right. fucking shit that can happen to you and to a lot of people. It does. You right. know, and like I think that's what makes it almost more emotional rather than like the zombies and the. The, and the in this version, Raiders. in this apocalyptic version, you can't even treat it. You know what I mean? So even that little bit of hope is just not even a possibility. Like, sure, Bill has all of the Home Depot supplies in the world. He doesn't have chemotherapy. <laughs> he can't do that. Um, the episode right. that precedes this, or succeeds this, the episode after this, actually addresses the gasoline will just doesn't live last forever like the last of us part two wants you to believe right um i highly doubt that any of those chemicals used for chemotherapy would last either you know what i mean so yeah, like I yeah mean, it's like, radiation and all that stuff too and you have to once and it's also with everyone dying the people and this goes into the last episode and we'll get to it where like killing a doctor uh is actually it's very huge. significant because the there's probably not many doctors left in the world you yeah. know how, how do you do like you can't surgery. teach it as easily as you could back then you know right um, um but yeah no then. i uh i yeah i really like this episode um i know uh I, I a lot of like the queer twitter was talking about it and you know some people are like i've seen both where it's like yeah this is amazing oh my god but other people are like yeah it's a solid uh, uh gay story you know, not they're like there's been other better examples and whatnot. You know, once again, when something's but you don't understand, they, this is in The Last of Us. This is when it right. matters. Uh, <laughs> you matter right. now uh, that you're in but, my video game. At the very least, it made a, uh, made you know conservatives upset again, and that's funny every time. Even though like they clearly never played the that's game. That's why it's the second whatnot. lowest rated episode on the IMDb list. The other episode is when two younger gay girls kiss. That's the one that's rated the lowest. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, but no, I mean, I feel like this was, but like, I, I just, as a relationship itself, I felt like this was more real and just, uh, and, um, yeah, it felt more real because yeah, it goes back to like, one, you gotta remember this is 2003, then apocalypse happens. So that like gay marriage and stuff isn't a thing. So I think that's another element to it. That I think that makes it, uh, right. you know, more interesting, uh, and that's why I think they're like at the beginning, they don't know 
they both know, but they don't know how to bring it up in case because one, it's more dangerous now, uh, world where everyone kills each other, uh, and whatnot. But yeah, I just feel like it felt real. And also Bill is a character, um, with him being both, uh, gay but also like what seems to be a almost libertarian conservative libertarian fuck yeah, yeah where like yeah. he doesn't trust the government uh he, you know he even has like the uh don't tread on me flag and i actually really dug that because it just shows that like that like that to me is like more realistic that like they're not everyone is in a a, a, a it goes back to just stereotypes and stuff right like so it, go, it goes against that stereotype but if anything that is real there is gay conservatives out there you know what i mean it, that happens or uh or whatnot you know so like those type of people exist so i really like that that isn't just like they made an effort to like show that like yeah he's a doomed day prepper uh you know and he's gay yeah. and that's cool and whatnot but everything he is uh i'm actually <laughs> on his side a lot because i'll actually i'll talk about it now uh i feel like in this episode it's a little bit more uh emphasized but there's another episode where they show the plane crashed and all the that find they find that mass grave yeah, basically yeah uh that the government yeah only was caring about themselves and uh was willing to do genocide basically on anybody to stop the spread and it still didn't work um but yeah they bombed cities and whatnot and he calls them nazis at one point and i'm like yeah you're right bill i'm not like i'd be like right there with them being like yeah. they're the ones that ha- let, let this happen uh, so in a way, I feel like it's almost like an anti-government motif, not motif, but like maybe message to this to a degree that, uh, I mean, my personal politics is I believe that only we can take care of ourselves. I don't really believe that the uh, government will have our best interests at heart at the end of the day. They want to be in power. Um, and there's a lot of elements of that in this show that wasn't really in the first game at all. I don't know if that maybe is... Uh, Neil Druckmann wanted to be more political in this show in this show compared to the game. I don't know what it is, uh, but I dig it. And it, yeah. it, they really show a little bit of it more in, in this episode with Bill specifically as a character with him being like, no, I'm going to take care of myself. That's what I've always believed. And he does it. And that's why he's able to have that town to himself and kind of live almost to the best life you could live. I think in this world. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Cool episode episode four was called Please Hold to My Hand, which I assume is also another song title. Because Please Hold to My Hand is a weird sentence just to say, but um, this is the it's episode. I don't know. <laughs> it could be <laughs> Please Hold made, My Hand. Yeah. Or Please t- to Hold My Hand, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, this is so like after Bill, I'm thinking through the episodes, I'm like, the major beats of this of the game was between Bill and and Henry is there, you know, they climbed the hotel, which they threw the hotel into episode two. Um, if that, that entry lobby it was, I remember that very well, but, um, the whole point of, of that section is Joel finally trusting Ellie with a gun. And so like, they're going to do that in this episode here. And they do right at the beginning. And it's done. It's done so much differently in the game. There is that a couple of moments where you're like, you won't let her have a gun. And then he's being choked out. Not only is he choked out, his head's being held underwater in like a puddle in like the th- fourth floor of the hotel yeah. or something like that. And she shoots him. And in the game, he's still pissed because she she betrayed his trust. And he like literally won't even acknowledge the fact that uh, she saved his life. It takes mm-hmm. him a bit. Right. And then eventually when there's like, 36 dudes out there in a courtyard and for whatever reason he needs to kill them all (laughs) um because the big thing in the game is most of the humans you have to kill most of the zombies you don't have to you can circumvent that scenario which is i find that interesting um he trusts her with a rifle you know what i mean it's a big thing gameplay obviously helps you out there because she can shoot people for you um, on grounded mode without any supplies because I played my save file wrong on the grounded mode when I replayed the game for like the fourth time. I spent probably 10 hours in that section. So like I really know that cut scene <laughs> very well because sometimes to give myself a break, I would rewatch it to like let my hand off the controller and calm down a bit from being so upset because there were some Terminator ass <laughs> motherfuckers in, in, in that group there. You needed like seven headshots to, to kill. Any case, 
Here, it's handled very differently. It's very early on. And when she does that, he reacts in a very, very different way where he's sorry she had to do that. He, you know, might have some difficulty acknowledging that she saved his life, not because of a pride thing or not because she broke his trust, you know, with the guns thing, but because that's a big weight to put on a kid that like you yeah. might be responsible for this again. You might have to do this again to save me. You know what I mean? It might not just be, you know, you might not be sheltered like I want. He was to. really trying to avoid it throughout, you know, yeah. and I think also that's the first inclination that he's, you know, has some sort of uh, uh, paternal like love maybe for her or like worry for her. I mean, maybe not love is the right thing at this point, but like he's concerned about her, like her mental health, you know, of, of having to, and we, in I think he, in to a degree and not acknowledges of like the, the red he sees. And the reason he sees that is because he's had to kill people and yeah. he doesn't know yet that she has as well, but still um, it's, yeah, he has that just in uh, paternal reaction almost, where it's like, "Sorry, you had to do that." Because I think yeah. he the he was trying to avoid that. He was just trying to get her to the thing and forget about her. But since he's you know kind of sees his daughter and her a little bit and whatnot, yeah, that's that's a good scene. I actually like that a lot better than like the whole "you broke my trust, I'm the expert out here" kind of thing. That because yeah. there's all also he kind of like later on too. He you know how he understands how lucky he is to even be alive still. Like, I feel yeah. like that shows the severity of, like, doing this journey a lot more than the game does. Because in the game, by this point, you've killed how many people? You're probably familiar with you've the guns a little bit more. You've killed hundreds of humanoid things, zombies or people. So you already feel like a badass, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, maybe it's a little bit easier to do the pride uh, direction with that as Joel in the game. But as here, I think he's, what, killed maybe one person? that on camera yeah, a couple the first maybe. guy we saw uh there so like yeah they've been trying to avoid encounters as much as possible because he doesn't want to sure. kill people and also he knows he might not get lucky the next time absolutely i feel like this episode it might be the weakest one of them all because it's funny you know the game had a lot of gameplay moments where joel and ellie are going through you know city-like environments and talking and then sneaking and shooting and talking and sneaking and shooting. Um, the, the show here sticks to the major beats because, you know, showing them sneaking around and talking and shooting isn't as interesting to show for a game. This is the episode that does that. It shows a lot of that. And it cuts back to um, the local Kansas City. In the game, this was Pittsburgh, by the way. Yeah. I think it makes more sense it's Kansas City because – it's a lot farther away. <laughs> They've actually had like a distance. Than... I mean, yeah, you could Boston still... to Pittsburgh is far. I don't get me wrong, but it's still the East Coast. If we're trying to go to the West Coast, this feels like a bigger like, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've driven progress. when I drove from uh, when I moved to Denver, right? Like we drove through Kansas City. Like it is more direct if you're going from like, yeah, East Coast because they definitely go down than West rather than. I could see going through Pittsburgh if you just, you know, kind of followed the the Great Lakes a little bit. Um, and maybe it kind of lines up a little bit more with Wyoming. But, yeah, I, I like that Kansas City felt, yeah. I think, a better option, too. Especially then you don't have to worry about, like, weather and stuff because they left at, like, a time I where... I think one of the things, one of the reasons why they chose Kansas City is because it matched the filming location structurally, like the type of architecture yeah. than Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is an old city, an old American city. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but we cut back and forth between Joel and Ellie and then this local Kansas City resistance group that a week ago beat Fedra. You know what I mean? Um, they won, and there's, the next episode shows how violent their victory was. Um, but, like, this, I found them to be the weakest. And it's mainly because when we're first introduced to them, I don't fully understand the scope of their reach, their influence, and their power. Yes, at the beginning of the episode, Joel talks about how every hour they need to stop to get more gas because it's mostly water now because it's broken down so much. And yes, we do see multiple cars in one shot being flaunted around driving to do patrols, which feels like a huge waste. You know what I mean? By this group. Yes, they have resources. I get it. Yeah. But like, 
I did not realize that maybe I missed something early in this episode. But I feel like it's next episode that they say, yeah, they, they, they just got it. You know what I mean? They're not actually really held together. They lost their leader. It's not very There's, organized. Yeah. It's yeah, more like it's just rage. Just then they don't really have a target things. yet. And the main leader there, I forget what her name is, obviously an original character for the show. Um, I, it, I can easily come to the conclusion of they are unfocused. She's giving them a focus. You know, we need to hunt down Henry. Oh, but it's Kathleen played by Kathleen Melanie Linsky. And she's been yeah, in she, stuff and she's, she's cool. good. Some what I've heard. I don't really care for her character because it felt very walking dead cartoonish of like, this is my focus and it's going to be my downfall. I'm so focused on Henry that I die because of it. But I feel like last of us has thus far portrayed, uh, yeah, much more sophisticated storytelling for how it treats people. Yeah. I also um, didn't really like, um, cause I know like in the after episode, they did like the behind the scenes once again, or like in inside the episode, I think is what they call it. And they're like, yeah, we really wanted to show emphasize that like, usually when like revolutions happen, you know, they're violent. And then usually they just do the same thing that their oppressors did. And I'm like, I the French maybe historically, but also not. That's not necessarily always the case. Like, yeah, and and I I get what they're trying to do, but yeah, I I feel like I I get what you're saying with the weakest. I thought it was just fine, but yeah, it does feel a little bit more Walking Deady, where yeah, yeah, they're just a unorganized but slightly organized enough group that are just looking for more blood, uh, for their oppression. Yeah. And I I get I get that because that has happened in history, but it isn't the it's not that black and white either. You know what I mean? There's I feel like that's, that's examples, the interpretation but... I would want to have is that they are looking for more blood, but like, that's not really what they give is an impression, especially because she, most yeah. of my impression, most of my interpretation of it is colored by knowledge from the fifth episode leading back into the fourth. Cause we get, I, we know that that just happened in the fifth, the fourth, I maybe didn't. Um, but, and I don't want to be this guy as I'm not this guy. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be this guy a little bit here. I don't see her being a leader, let alone imposing. They made her see, like people reacted to her as if she is just, just really imposing and, and evil and malicious in like a leadership way that they follow. And she just wasn't. And like, I don't want to be this, this guy, but like, the dude with the tacked out gear and the beard who plays Tommy in the video game, by the way, um, yeah. he looks like he would be the leader. And I'm not one, you know, I don't want to be the, the misogynist. Oh, women can't whatever. I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to say, but like, cause a lot of people can will probably have said this and they mean that, but like, I don't see her actually being, she at, had when she says a, we need like... to hunt down Henry and they're all like, oh, okay. Like it didn't feel like that deserved. I guess the my reaction. my thing was more just because it happened so suddenly that they don't almost see her as a leader, but it was more because she was the sister of the former leader who they did believe in that they felt like she's just the next in line. And I guess who else are we gonna follow? So that was my kind of interpret interpretation of it. Um, Not that we knew that in this episode, but that's also you know, yeah. Stories she definitely can just be gave more, more of a like. I get it. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like she did fine uh, as it, but yeah, I think just overall, maybe they didn't give her enough to like, like her reasons to work with besides just like her brother died. And like, yeah, we feel for her a little bit when they, when she's in li the little, the bedroom that she was in when she was so much younger. Cause it's 20 years ago. Uh, I liked that, but yeah, maybe they should just stuck with like not showing who's running this group and more of just fuck. We're in a, we're in some sort of group. And maybe that they say that more for episode five, but it's only from um, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Henry. Perspective. Henry. Yeah, because here's the thing: Joel and Ellie don't know jack shit about these people. We are getting um, uh, these scenes without the context of Joel and Ellie at all to set them up. And from Joel and Ellie's perspective, it is just like in the game. These are just random fuckos that run this town or whatever. Like, right. and it doesn't even matter who they are to Joel and Ellie. So you like get through it. episode four could should have I don't want to say should have because I oh, what the fuck I can I can't make a TV show you know what I mean but like see episode four here should have not shown any real faces or if they did not really identified that those are people like maybe Joel and Ellie see in the distance this woman and the bearded dude 
amongst other people and eagle eyed people in the next episode might actually put together. Oh, those were those guys. And they're, you know, that's when we see this group. Oh, okay. They were, they were the leaders, but yeah, having like Henry is the reason why we care who these people even are because Henry becomes tied to Joel and Ellie in the episode, you know, um, I don't know. Moving on to episode five, Endure and Survive. Yeah, like the stinger for four is that they're being held up by Henry and Sam. Um, in episode five, we get their backstory. Okay, they're not bad people. What I do think was cool is when they show the flashback and, and Henry and Sam, because Sam's really hungry, and Henry's like, okay, we're going to go. It's very dangerous. Follow me. They stop in the lobby of that building, the ground floor, and they looks out the window. That's the beginning of episode four with the shootout when Ellie does shoot the guy there. We see that from Sam and, and for, we see that from yeah, Henry's that was perspective. Cool. That was really cool. Yeah. And it's seen in a different light. Joel looks so badass. That's why Henry wants to follow him because he looks so badass and he's shooting people. Henry doesn't, Henry he wants doesn't to see run away he from got killed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even, he doesn't even see that part. You know what I mean? So like, and as we, Henry does say, he, shoving or appointing a non loaded gun, an empty gun at someone's head is the closest he's ever gotten to anything like that. You know, obviously, when he sees Joel pop out like a video game, kill someone, pop back down, like that looks heroic and you know and badass. Um, I think the two of them are really good, Henry and Sam. The the deaf angle, um, I wasn't uh, expecting that, and it's a different take on the character and their relationship with each other. In the video game, Henry is very much uh, no baggage. We need to be as light as possible and move. He won't even let Tan- Sam take a transformer. <laughs> It's a little robot toy. You won't even let him take the toy. Got to be it light on her feet. And how does that, you know, how do you raise a kid in this environment when he doesn't have anything, you know, like that? But it's his brother. He's, you know, he's looking out for his brother, right? And this, it's very different where he does tend to his needs. He gives him paints and crayons. He gives him toys. Granted, they're not he on the move. To- but not fully distract him from the world, but give him some sort of like he outlet. Needs something. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it's different and I like this more, but if there was a message to be said from the way the video game interpretation was, then it's obviously lost. Um, I, I, I like this episode a lot. There's the stuff at the end where, you know, in the game, there's this guy in the sniping and, you know, and, and, you know, you, you have to avoid the shots and it's really hard. (laughs) especially when he can one shot you on the harder difficulties. And then when you're up there, then you have to, you know, turret defense, you know, site sniper defense yeah. them. It's a fun section of playthrough. They nailed that in the game. hundred percent. They nailed it. Um, hundred percent. They nailed it. I love that. That so much. It honestly felt like I could be fucking holding a controller and, and felt like I was playing Pedro Pascal and the Pascal Nassance that we're living in right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> What did you? I don't know, what did you think about the last half, including the zombies or the you know the emergence? Of yeah, I, I'm glad the zombies are back. And I like I said, I I go back and forth. If I really liked them not showing as much zombies, I mean, I still like make you afraid of them because of how I guess not often they come. But when they do come, they're like, yeah, they're just scary as fuck. Uh, especially we got the bloater yeah. as well. Um, uh, but yeah, I really I really liked the ending there, and then you know. All the people you kind of want to die die, so that's cool too. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, like, she dies. The Cat Catalin, uh, whatever uh, her name was, Kathleen. Catal- Kathleen. We were talking about Game of Thrones earlier. Got Catalin stuck in my head. Kathleen, you want her to die? And well, because when she does the thing of like, did your brother deserve to die or deserve to live? How do you know? When she when she goes and like, that's just super villain, you know, territory. It's like, all right. I can take the veneer of, you know, uh, sympathizing with this person. I can just toss it away now. We've been yeah. given the go ahead to hate this person completely. So when she dies cartoonishly, it's literally her own focus is what blinds her to the dangers around her. And that's how she dies. Like, you like that. I liked that. Um, yeah. When the bloater kills uh, the dude who played Tommy in the video game, just like how... One of the death screens you can get from one of those guys in the video game. It's the same ripping the jaw off. Awesome. Like, and it's scary. They were armed. They had mounted machine guns on vehicles, armored vehicles. It didn't matter. The horde (laughs) got them anyway. 
And then when right. it's done, it's it's even creepier that like they got them and then they just move on in the city, which is now very little protected. Everyone in that city is dying. They're going to die because Kathleen focused all of the firepower to hunt down one guy who she had a one problem guy. with. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. And now they all die because of that. I, I like um, that, even though I don't really like the Walking Dead isms leading to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I want to go back to like Henry and Sam, and yeah, I actually like this a lot more than the 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 game. Yeah, with like Henry really is just trying to give outlets to, um, uh, to Sam to you know try his best to keep him alive as long as possible. Honestly, I, I you can kind of tell that Henry's like, I don't even know how much longer I have left or, or like what I'm going to do, but he's optimistic. And I like that, that compared to Joel, who feels like this whole time up until this point where like all the shit I've planned hasn't gone my way. We've had to come through Kansas city. I didn't want uh, Elliot to use the gun. Uh, and honestly, he's more of like just a doomist <laughs> to a degree of like, like even when the mission started where he's like, no, we're, this is a death sentence. This isn't worth the risk. Yeah. You know, and then even when, uh, uh, what's her name dies there, you know, she tells him to, uh, save as many as you can. But even then, like that still sounds like a death sentence, right? Like save someone because you're going to die. Like yeah. your, your time is ticking. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like a different refreshment, refreshing air almost with like Henry and Sam would being like, Henry's Henry may be like deep down knows it's probably not going to live, but at the very least he's going to try his best and it'll is seems more optimistic out in the forefront. You know what I mean? With the people around him. Yeah. Like, oh no, we'll be fine. That's enough food. And it's because he has a brother that like he needs to take needs care of. Needs to be. He, need, yeah. he just needs he, to, you know, and then that, um, that ending liked, is great. Obviously. And I like that. Uh, the actor for Sam, uh, uh, Kevin, Kevion, uh, Woodard, uh, probably, mispronouncing the name um, they actually but, but blinded him for the episode they they popped oh. his ear no but no he was actually deaf like as yeah, they showed yeah. in the thing and i think that's cool that they you know wasn't and he was teaching everyone on set like sign language i just i like that kind of shit where like they actually have someone who uh is part of that community right that can actually represent that character respectfully not a lot of uh, casting calls are going out for a deaf young african-american male <laughs> Like, yes, I got that because, you know, it's very rare that, you know, and obviously, you know, whatever, like they can just say a kid and then he can still get something. But like it was is cool that it was. Yeah, no, we needed this specific type of person. And then you got a good you got a good kid. Um, But and then that last scene is just like, even though I know it's fucking coming like throughout. It's still, man, it just. Yeah. Fuck. Like, how do you like. And like, this is episode five and how many people have already like just just awful sad like you had the break with episode four I guess from episode three to this like it's just if you're if you <laughs> you can't get through this you're not going to get through the rest of this season because yeah. it's emotionally just awful yeah awful yeah. and that and yeah, the 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 suicide scene was just yeah. like I hate to say well done but I guess well done because like yeah. yeah he just doesn't hesitate yeah he sees it and he's like, I no, yeah. And that's where it's you almost show, like he's not even sh- thinking. You know what I mean? He just does yeah. it out of you know yeah. his yeah. And it just yep. cuts, and I and I think that was a good way to cut it because then the next yep. episode's them burying. That's also how it is in the game. It cuts right then and there right. too, and it says like fall or something like that. Um, next episode, episode six, is called Kin, because guess what? Pedro finds Tom, but before he does, he stumbles. Uh, into a, a a a just a house in the middle of nowhere. The two um, Native American actors there were from an old TV show. or in an old TV show called Northern Exposure. Um, okay, they're very they honestly, cool. They're, I really they're character they... actors, but they've been in a lot of stuff in that similar type of you know uh, of way. Um, no, yeah. they were they were funny. I I loved I loved this yeah. scene. It kind of was a we needed that after what happened last episode. We needed that kind of just humor to you know lighten the load a little bit being like oh no joel you're lost <laughs> like, yeah yeah but they're also kind of just thriving out in the middle of nowhere because they've been no doing wants it to come beforehand to yeah yeah and no yeah. one wants to come out in the middle of the wilderness to yeah. seek refuge yeah. so yeah. um which then they eventually lead them into a group of seeming bandits but you know they take them to the commune um and yeah this is where uh joel is reunited with tommy tommy 
Tommy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dylan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, Tommy played by uh, Diego Luna, obviously. Um, and then yeah, they reconnect, but like obviously the big change in this is is just the deteriorated mental health of Joel. You know, what I mean that this journey has He's just only done... having like panic attacks yeah, and just yeah. loss. We of get breath, the meme which... from it now. You know, yeah, it's great. I love that meme. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, no, I like that they added that too because yeah, that's showing more of the mental health aspect that it's taking a toll on him, and he's been clearly through other shit, and it's finally like catching up to him. Yeah, uh, uh, I know. In once again, in the inside the episode thing, they kind of talk about adding that, and like they wanted to show his physical and mental health are, are taking a toll on this journey. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't know, I, as someone who has panic attacks, sometimes <laughs> I don't get necessarily the loss of breath like he does, but like, I can, I fully relate. I'm like, I've been there, Joel. I've been, I've been in that moment where you're just like, Holy fuck. I need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> so, uh, I liked it from that point, uh, just for me personally. Plus, um, um, it also helps when the conversation comes between him and Tommy on, uh, you know, you owe me like, just take her and do it. I can't in the game. So basically the, the, we killed people like thing that Tommy does, like there isn't that much of a rebuttal from Joel in the game. It's like, I did those things to protect us. And that's kind of it. You know what I mean? They gets subsided in the show because we show how vulnerable and how weak he feels. And he's basically begging his brother, you know what I mean? To, to do it for him. Um, whereas in the game, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's different. Um, and that whole like, uh, conversation with, uh, Ellie in the girl's bedroom when, um, everyone left me fucking except for you or whatever. Um, you know, in the game, she takes a horse and leaves and she leaves, runs away. Um, whether it's, they don't do that. They just do it here. But another big, key thing we have to remember in the video game you're not in jackson the town you're in the dam that's nearby and uh i heard this recently from neil Druckmann. they didn't have enough time and money to make jackson so they didn't so that's why oh, it's just the so dam this is more of his original vision then <laughs> yes yes literally um so i don't know if, if that house is in jackson that they go that she runs there or whatever or if that's just a house nearby but yeah in the show, obviously, they're just there. And yeah, there's the girl that people think is Dina, and it was very clearly meant to either be that if there's a second season or not, to make you think it is, you know. Um, the the barn with the lights, obviously, the first yeah. uh, big trailer for the game used that, and uh, PlayStation yeah. recreated it, that for the stage. I think it so, will be, yeah. so. Um, yeah. But can I, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, and it's because they made it obvious, obviously, and uh whatnot but uh before the whole like oh we're doing communism joke like when they first showed it and like the beginning there where they're like yeah, everyone's doing their thing and there's clearly no money involved really it's more of just trading and people are like working together to do what's necessarily and i'm just like i think this is based like like i literally out loud while I'm watching like i'm like they think this is like kind of close to like my dream commune you like, said I'm this just... is based out loud on ironically yeah yeah, wow. I was like, this is based. This place is based. Um, and then, like, they were like, yeah, like, everyone has roles, and, like, we kind of switch them so people, you know, you know kind of get bored. And I'm like, are they, like, I'm like, is this too on the, like, this can't be it. I'm like, no, they're not, they're not talking about the, the, an anarcho communism. The C word. <laughs> the C word. There's no way. I'm like, this is too, I'm like, I'm, it's my personal bias, right? I was like, that, this is my personal bias showing it's just a fort, whatever. But then they did more hints. And then eventually they just said it. And I'm like, no fucking way. Good for them. <laughs> well, at the same I liked... time, too, I don't see capitalism existing in this type of world at all. I don't think it could well, work. Yeah. It couldn't work. Not enough so, like, <laughs> in the, in the e cog of the machine. It's, to it's keep easier it running, to so. make, you know, a commune in this world than it would be to create. Oh, yeah. Not, don't get <laughs> me wrong. Know, so. I just thought it was funny that they, like, said it. Because I'm like, when I was watching it, like I said, I was like, this is it just my personal bias? Like, is this showing? And then they're like, no, we're doing it. And I love, uh, uh, Tommy's reaction. He like stops and like, it hits him. Cause they're both from fucking Texas. Not saying they're conservatives, yeah. but you're, if you're from Texas, you're definitely more probably have right leaning tendencies. Tommy also uh, like fought in desert storm in the show. Yeah. Remember? So, 
yeah he's um, definitely pro but yeah he, pro usa baby you know right um but like i just like that he pauses and it's just like oh it's always been the word that scares you and not you didn't even realize what you're doing or what like you and he clearly like loves it there too and he doesn't even realize that like oh shit he's said as much you know, how blessed he is to be there yeah but, so yeah. i just think it's funny and like i don't know neil Druckmann's politics but it makes me question a lot of neil Druckmann's politics in this whole season because of the mm-hmm. anti-government lens and then him showing this stuff makes me question it uh, i don't want to get bit. too much on the neil Druckmann stuff because no, no, a lot fine. of that conversation happened in the lead up to last of us part two and the leaks and stuff and then the the working the people to basically to oh, death yeah. at naughty dog and the anti oh, no, no, don't get me wrong. i'm just curious like why they're seeing they're, i'm just saying there's a lot of it to a degree where i'm questioning things um but yeah i just think it's at least for the i'm sure if somehow there is still conservative people watching this after episode three i'm sure they probably already clicked off uh, oh, you mean the show, not our show. The show, not our show. <laughs> no, they don't watch our show. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah, good good for them to kind of like really just keep being like, no, you're just scared of the word. And you don't yeah. have to even agree if it would work or not, but they're doing it right now. And it's, out of everything they've shown, it seems to be the most successful operating thing <laughs> in terms yeah. of having actual community. Um, so yeah, I had, I had to point it out because it, they, did, they fucking said the word. They said the thing. Um, but no, I really didn't. I did like it. And uh, that is uh, so Jackson is a real place in Wyoming. Um, uh, I think it's called Jackson's Holes, the actual name of the town. Uh, I don't think it's I think it's a little bit bigger than what is that. Um, but it, it's cool to kind of see um, just that setting. I like I like the setting. I actually forgot that in the game you do go to eastern colorado we'll get into that in the next episode here but it's uh, i can talk a little bit more from the about that being in colorado currently and like knowing <laughs> being like oh that's actually this like sure. straight up <laughs> okay well next episode episode seven was called left behind as such named after the dlc uh, Which story. i didn't play so i like to me this is all new for me i played it so. back in the day on playstation 3 it came out on valentine's day 2014 and I thought that's a weird day to put the DLC out. And then I get down and they kiss at the end. I'm like, what? You know, I was very upset. Oh, upset. Um, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Uh, I'm uh, obviously if they were to put it in in the, in the show, they would have put it in here. But it does change things. So essentially, at the end of Kin, they get to the, the university and Joel is stabbed with the baseball bat. Obviously, he doesn't fall from a, a second story balcony and get impaled from behind. I forget that was that episode. I keep thinking it was eight. Yeah, but it's a good thing the... to end it on. Yeah, I was gonna say the. Then I'll go back to what I meant to say, which was so like the. I think it's Eastern Colorado. That's straight up CSU, Colorado State University. Like they're the Rams IRL, and that's basically like forty minutes from me, which is just weird to see something that's taking place. Interesting. Like pretty much in my backyard um and i've been up there and i really like the area so basically it's kind of north of denver uh where that area takes place so and they show the freaking cool. root um uh 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 was it uh front the the highway they show the sign i'm like i take that to work <laughs> <laughs> well you missed them they were there i missed them you they're too far them. north they're too far should've north at the end of that episode, Joel gets impaled, and then, you know, right. and Ellie drags him off and the horse, and he falls off, and it looks like he dies. In the video game, it would then, then cut to Ellie on her own hunting a rabbit with a bow and arrow. It run, she kills it, but then she sees a deer, and she chases after the deer instead. And, like, at that moment, in the, that section there, you're not sure if Joel's alive, around, etc., and obviously we we get the David stuff and then, oh, yes, she needs medicine. You're like, oh, he she needs it for Joel. You know what I mean? And that's how the game works. They lose so much of that in this show by then cutting to her with him trying to save him. And then we get the flash, you know, the flashback stuff was left behind. Uh, so much of that is ruined, in my opinion. Not terribly ruined, but like it's just a it may, the impact is completely different. Start of Left Behind, I knew he was going to be okay if I did not already know that. You know what I mean? I knew he was going to be okay. Um, they missed out on that. But 
if they were to put left behind in, they would need to put it in sequentially anyway. Obviously, most people that played Last of Us when it first came out on PlayStation 3 played it and then played the DLC. No one like stopped halfway or anything, even when the DLC was out. So that's how people interpret saw the story is this extra thing Because in the left behind DLC section. It shows her trying to take care of him before the hunting thing. And she's going through okay. and she's going through an abandoned mall and getting these flashbacks of the last time she was in an abandoned mall, you know, a okay. few months ago when she was with Riley. Right. Um, how I would, you know, these episodes are chunked out in ways where they're, you know, self-contained and there needs to be that for the show. But if we were somehow able to redo this, I would have her hunting the stuff be first and then there's some sort of question on how she's been surviving this long, and then we get this left behind stuff personally. Um, I know you didn't play the left behind stuff. That was also the first time in the game. The main game itself, there were no clickers or people in the same area. And the, the DLC is when you get to experiment with what happens when they mix. You know what I mean? Um, do the humans all kill off all the clickers so you don't have to deal with them, or do the, they get overrun, etc.? how you you know do that gameplay wise obviously none of that's in this dlc but i really think that they nailed this story with ellie and riley what do you think about it yeah i mean uh i wasn't expecting it until like they showed the preview or whatever i'm like oh i i honestly didn't even remember that there was a dlc i'm like oh is this gonna be new <laughs> right. uh, until i read that like oh it's it happened in the game I'm like oh, okay um but no i thought it was fun uh i it sh- I liked them showing more about like uh, what Ellie was doing before uh, she started her journey with like she was in that basically police academy. Honestly, you know what that's what I guess you could call it. Um, now she clearly just doesn't fit in. Um, but also she's showing how tough she is because she basically any bullies that try to pick on her gave she a girl stitches. Them. Yeah, yeah, tries to fight them. I mean, if it makes her hurt as well. Um, but uh, and also just I think. Because I know there's going to be the fucking people who just watch the show uh, that whenever we get a season two and if the, if Ellie has a relationship with the woman, it's going to be like, oh, they're just, they're just pushing this. And it's like, no, nope. at least they showed an episode prior to being like, no, nope, she's yeah. interested in women. Fuck yep. you. Because um, yep. when I played Last of Us Part 2, that for me was the first time I realized that Ellie, like, I, oh, okay. she, that for me, but I didn't care because I'm not one of those people. No, you cared. Uh, you, were je- cared. you were jealous. I was jealous. Um, but no, I thought it was good, and I liked the kind of pacing of it. And I, I guess I kind of agree, too, of, like, maybe they could have, like, made it more of a cliffhanger if Joel was alive or not. Um, but I think I think they probably thought that is that, okay, there's three episodes left. Like, Joel is probably alive. Like, I feel like if they showed him dying, they wouldn't do it that way. Uh, I feel like for a general audience member, I feel like they probably just expected the audience members are smarter than that, that they'll just, it won't matter if we show him hurting or not, um, or healing. Um, so yeah, I thought, I thought it was solid. I don't think it's my favorite episode in the, uh, the series here, but, um, I, I get its purpose and it was sad. And once again, at the end, that just all our, all our heroes just can't be happy because yep. everyone yeah. just dies. <laughs> One yeah, and, and that work that <laughs> that them both getting bitten and all that stuff and the the lines that they say is a hundred percent how it was in that DLC. Um, how their reaction to it afterwards, you know, is is like that. Um, now, I think it's awesome that like in, in the original video game, uh, Last of Us on PlayStation Three and PlayStation Four, you know, Ellie mentions at some point when they're walking joel and her and we're walking she says oh she played this game once and it was this game this character she can rip your head off blah blah blah. it's very clearly meant to be mortal Kombat, but obviously it was all fictional stuff there's a, a twilight um you know rip off in the game that's mentioned a few times she's like why did people watch this i don't know it was dumb kids watched it it was just a love story <laughs> you know like they didn't do like they should have had twilight in in this but 2003 i guess maybe the books I'm trying to think of what would have been out at 2000. Titanic. Of- Titanic. Titanic. Yeah, you know, we could have had Titanic. Um, remember when uh, James Cameron recently came out and scientifically proven that they both couldn't have been on that board 
and that he, <laughs> Jack and Rose would not have both survived. That, no. He came out recently to prove <laughs> it that. scientifically. And I'm like, yeah, you do that, King. Um, remember when I hated James Cameron and I just decided I don't? Um, <laughs> so uh, that was recent, too. That was recent, too. Um, so it's cool that it was an actual Mortal Kombat 2 machine, Mortal Kombat 2 being the most important of the Mortal Kombat games and one of the biggest, right. uh, most important fighting games of all time. Um, you know, I'm glad it was like that. However, I'm just going to throw out a little bit of, of, a, of a thing I wish that they did. And I understand if they want to be realistic and we're talking 2003's world apocalypse, yes, Uncharted didn't happen. Yes, only the first Jack and Daxter game happened. Maybe the second one was close to release. I get it. However, we didn't get those Naughty Dog Easter eggs like we did in the game. They went through a toy store at one point. There was Jack and Daxter plushies in the game and an Uncharted board game. Fine, throw that away. But in the arcade, in the DLC, in the corner, there is a Jack X combat racing motorbike, you know, (laughs) arcade game, and you could play it for a trophy. And that was fun <laughs> to see. And they didn't do it, and I get it. I get it. Because it's not real. I get it. They could they have the Jurassic Park ones you see at the arcades at that time, where you had you were in like the booth there, and you're shooting the dinosaurs. Yeah. They did have Cruise in USA. And she sits in it. So, like, okay, that's fair. Those were real arcade. There was, I didn't read the article, but there was a big thing of, like, making a 2003 arcade. You know what I mean? With machines from the 90s still in it, too, obviously. Two things that they didn't do in this show that they did in the DLC. Um, you know, they bring the mechanics of how you played Last of Us into this prequel non combat area. Yes, there was clickers at the end in the DLC where the the music causes a whole bunch of them to come in the DLC and you they run away. Um but in the game they're shooting and then you can even throw bricks and bottles and stuff. One two of the things that Riley has Ellie do, does with her, and I'll tell you this because you didn't know um you do a water gun fight so you shoot each other with water guns and then there's a mini game which i thought was a lot of fun where uh you get on this second story balcony in the mall so it's you're like you can see down below like a food court thing and there's a whole bunch of bricks and you know how like in malls they'll have like cars parked inside for show yeah you're you're trying to smash your car more than Riley smashes hers by throwing bricks at it, and I thought that was a lot of fun. Okay. So I'm like <laughs> throwing them through the sunroof and breaking the glass, like that was fun. They should just try to like drive one of the cars, you know, just that would have been awesome. It, or just, you know. just smash a car. <laughs> show me, show me some of that. But uh, I thought it was a great episode. Um, I don't remember if in the in the, in the DLC came out, I was ten years younger. You know, maybe I didn't catch this in the game. Because when they kissed, I was like, oh, wow. I just did not know this was going to happen. In the show, they're obviously very much hinting at it. Ellie actually does test the water several times. Oh, did you meet a boy? No. Oh, yeah, this, this, they're, this they're, chick they're you met, is she stuff. our age? You know, she's trying to, to test and see that stuff. Like, to me, it felt very obvious now because I both know, you know what I mean? And, like, you know, I'm smarter um, was a good, you know, than being like an edgy high schooler when the game came out. I mean, like, yeah, even Riley makes a joke about Victoria's Secret. Like, they're both yeah. flirting or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, so yeah, Victoria's Secret was like definitely peak 2003. <laughs> so they did a good job with that mall. Yeah. And it was cool that they actually used like a mall. Like, I was like, when, I, when they were showing, I'm like, damn. Either like they have fantastic green screens or like did they make a they giant built it. set they built it yeah. yeah and it was like oh because they were they had an already mall that was going to be destroyed that they just built in i thought that yeah. was that was cool yeah it was awesome the next episode the penultimate episode was called when we are in need this is the big cannibal pervert episode uh, yeah. this is the episode where troy baker plays a character named james who i don't remember from the game but like Seeing a picture, yeah, he was a brief character. He does go and get the medicine and comes back, and that's basically, I think, what he just does. Um, but he gets killed uh, probably. in this, though, with the, with yeah. the knife, which yeah. was cool. Yeah, the hat, the, like, uh, meat chopper. Yeah, it's like meat cleaver. Meat chopper. Cleaver, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we skip, obviously, the part where uh, they're, they're, when Ellie and David are waiting 
for James to come back in the game. They are then attacked by clickers, and James comes back, and the three of them are fighting and shooting, and that's how a little bit of trust is earned between Ellie and him. We skip all that, which I find interesting. I feel like they still could have done that, like a, a scaled-down degree. Um, fantastic episode. Uh, they nailed all the parts of it. When we get the part... Now, in the in the game, I feel like they, they tip the hat at the fact that these people are eating people earlier than the show does it. And I know and they said in that afterwards thing, they want it to be... Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was uh, something Troy Baker said. But they want it to be... You know when Ellie knows, as opposed to you know when the game told you in the game um, that they were cannibals. It was hard for me to know because I knew going you in knew. that they cannibals. So it's tough for me to like... Yeah. Not see the the because I think that really early on they say that like we need to bury my dad's body and they're like, oh, it's too cold for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, fuck. And later, <laughs> like, that same woman is is going to cook the stew and he comes in with chunks of meat. She says, what is it? Venison. I don't know if you know this and I don't know this for a fact. I've been told this. The closest meat that human tastes like is venison. So it's easy to say oh. human is venison. It's easy to pretend that, I guess. Didn't, didn't know that. I, I guess don't know. I'm going to have to try venison, Ethan. <laughs> I haven't tried venison at all either. I don't think I've had it. I don't um, think. I'm sure it's fine. People have elk. survived off of it for years. I've had elk. Um, I but there's a scene when, they're eat, when everyone's eating the stew and they're so hungry. They're so hungry, Devin. And they have these bowls and the spoons and just the sounds like i'm like yeah. man they're eating people yeah. they did a real good job on that and you can even see james like he knows and he doesn't want to eat it but he gets that look that like you better eat it you better eat that stew he does it anyway you're making us eat it yeah yeah right yeah no yeah that was a good like, other people don't know just but he knows, tiny yeah. detail or tiny little easy thing that tells a whole lot of just like the sounds yeah. and like just the people's reaction to it and you can just uh, it's just at least at the very least if you didn't pick up on it you're like why is the vibe weird at the yeah. very least uh um but yeah i forget like how like it's been a while since i played the game but i forgot how like creepy this guy is and i didn't remember yeah. if like he just gave off like pedophile vibes or if that was just me and i'm like oh no yeah he's definitely a pedophile they they changed it a little bit so first off the religious aspect i don't really remember but it f fits for this type of character that's what he's using you know what I mean? To keep people like tied to him. He doesn't have anything to offer them because they're starving to death, but he can pretend that there's something he can offer. But um, the whole like when he slaps the kid and then is the one, you know, that's the abusive relationship and then is the one to hold it up. The mom, but the way he, he was talking to, to her was just so like, because he says something about like, oh, you don't need your father anymore because you have me. And I'm like, oh, you, ha just... least you have a father. Could he be talking about the Lord? No, he's talking about himself. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's just yeah. so gross, dude. <laughs> In the game, though, there's with him and Ellie, and I. First off, the character of David is played by Nolan North in the video game, aka Nathan Drake Uncharted, which I thought was such a cool Easter egg. They make him a pedophile, and they make him play like this awful person. When Ellie's in the cage in the video game, and uh, they're tar talking back and forth, and uh, I, the whole aspect of you have a violent heart is the show which is is a cool line to say um in the video game david says basically something like he acknowledges that she's different or whatever um but it's really just because he's a perverted pedophile and uh when ellie breaks his fingers he has his hand on the thing there on the cage on the bars there on that like you know horizontal you know separator in the bars because in the game he says and you're special and i can't pull off a pedophile vibe I hope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus I hope. Christ. <laughs> um, but that he gives off a very pedophilic, pedophilic, yeah, no, it's pedophilic just creepy. It's just creepy vibe when he does least. this. And that's creepy like, that's when I'm like, you oh. Do you don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, some people might not realize that until he literally tries to rape her <laughs> at the end there, you know, in the, in the show. But, uh, it, you know, fantastic. I really like the, that scene, though, where like, Ellie sees where it's going and then uses his, just his, I guess lust, I guess it was gross ass lust. Yeah. Uh, to, you know, capitalize on that and just, yeah, fuck up his hand. Um, yeah. This is where, for me, like where Bella Ramsey really just showed out for that, like just so good. Um, yeah. 
And then the fucking, yeah, when they when he puts the cleaver down, like, as she's talking, even though, like, I know she's going to be okay. I know she's going to be okay. We know the game. Just yeah. that that oh, sound man, effect yeah. with it, like, made me Because you don't know. Like, they, what if they decided, you know what? She doesn't need two hands in the show. Like, they could have not even. They it, it's just her. more of just, like, the... It goes back to, like, uh, uh, horror movies in general where, like, it's scarier when it's appliances or, like, things that you can have in your home as opposed to a... Like, no one's... Most people aren't scared when you have a, a character with a gun pointed at their head and they're being threatened because not many people have been in that situation. But when someone holds a knife to your neck... Is. Yeah. Or someone holds a knife to your neck, that's different. Or when it's... Yeah, when he has the yeah. cleaver and he just boom, that that sound you're like, oh my, like because I've heard that when I've been chopping my onions, yeah, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> right. you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, and I'm crying so, too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, for sure, for sure. I did like that once. I think this was the same thing in the game for the most part. Uh, uh, where yeah, it's Joel is doesn't save her; she saves him herself, really. Yeah, and, and she sees red for the first time. I think yeah. uh, at this just point hacking away at his face. Yeah. And the how the, the buildings burning. By the way, I hated that boss fight. I just didn't like it. It wasn't good was... in the game, honestly. Because it's like there's these very obvious like squares of broken glass that you don't want you to step on because he hears that and it felt it didn't feel organic. They, I don't I feel like that could have been a cutscene in the game and been fine. That's why it works better in the show. Um they do change a little bit. You say, you know, Joel doesn't save Ellie, and that's true. You do play a bit as Joel obviously right. running through um to get to the place and you're you're seeing the smoke eventually and that's how you know where to go because it could be a bit confusing um in the game when joel gets to ellie it's while she's hacking at the face yeah still past yeah. when you know like all right he's dead um but th- i they changed it and i go back and forth on whether or not i th- think it's better or not i think the idea that she may or may not have continued to keep hacking but she needed to be, you know, stopped and sold. Then it can almost be more powerful than it's all done. And she walks out, you know what I mean? Of the burning building. If the bur- building wasn't burning, she probably would have stayed there and maybe been right. sobbing on the floor or something like that. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a strong vibe either way, which way I think is quote unquote better. Yeah, I mean, I think it's also cool in the sense that like Joel knows right away that she survived and probably knows what she had to do. And he's just, cause he's I'm assuming he sees like the blood on her face and stuff. And he immediately just tries to like hug her and like, you know, console her to make sure that she's good. And I, I like that. I, I got, I think both are good. I think they're just different ways of doing it. Um, and then we got our, uh, it's okay, baby girl. Yeah. Yeah. Line that I, yeah. I always think is a little funny. Um, but, uh, yeah. And I yeah. like how it just kind of cuts where it just shows them kind of wandering. Yeah. Um, Before this is we my move on, un- yeah. If, if I can just interject, I'm sorry. Um, Troy Baker played that character, James, and I, I, I wish, I wish he was a different person in there. I wish because I don't remember if this person does die to the meat cleaver or whatever. I don't know, but uh, how cool! So like in the next episode, you know, in the after thing, they talk about oh this this metaphorical Ellie giving birth to Ellie because it's, you know, her, you know, the opposite of that. If Troy Baker played the guy that Joel tortures and kills, <laughs> that would have been <laughs> so cool because Joel is a killer. He killed, right. I, I don't know, I thought that would have been neat, but sorry, yeah. you go on. No, I get it. No, um, I mean, I did like that when Joel tortured the two dudes. Like that was brutal. Like I'm like, oh no, we're getting ape shit Joel now. Like you don't yeah. want ape shit Joel. Like he's seeing red again and he's just doing whatever it takes. But yeah, that was like just a good episode. Um then here's one of my like critiques is I wish there was ten episodes and I wish we just had something more in the from here. I feel like it was kind of a jump to go from here to like okay, it's over. Kinda like we're at the final we're at the uh, straightaway because I feel like we weren't. We don't feel like we're in the straightaway after episode eight. We don't feel like we're near. I, I know geographically we are, but I just wish there was like something, or maybe the last yeah. episode needed to be longer because the last episode was only like I think last episode was the shortest. Yeah, yeah. I kind of wish it was longer. Like I think we need some more connection. I feel like it was kind of geographically it makes sense. But now, do you I think wish if there they some... showed a map? 
and like you saw the progress throughout the episodes of like they were in bought like as Americans we know where Boston is and we know where Wyoming is. Right. You know what I mean? I don't actually remember where the the Firefly Hospital was at the end. Utah, they do shit Salt literally. Lake City. Okay. But like Which by we, the way, that is that. a hike to go from because I think at this episode they're in the mountains because like to drive, let's say, if I wanted to drive to Salt Lake City from Utah, you can do it. It's just west. You go straight through the mountains. It still takes like, I think, several hours to get there. And that's by driving. So like right. there's a lot of time that needs to pass, I think, or at least yeah. a good chunk. Yeah. Uh, like a week's worth of time. Yeah. But the last episode was called Look for the Light. Oh, which I like this. Because... When, we, when we are in need, look for the light. Kind of ties in a little bit. Well, I think it actually titles. ties in. The first episode is called When You're Lost in the Darkness. Look well, for the yeah, light. I know it's that's the, the tagline thing. of like the game or whatever. But I'm just saying I still like that even the last two kind of tie in a little bit. Please to hold my hand, endure and survive. That's the other one. <laughs> um, it opens with uh, Anna, um, Ellie's mom, giving birth and the thing. And that was in the in like... Uh, I thought like there's a comic called American Dream, a Last of Us comic. It's a couple issues. I never read it. I guess it's Anna and um, Marlene, uh, but the birth isn't in it. And so like they've had opportunities to show this in other mediums and they never really did it. So that's cool that this is new, but this yeah. was always intended. Um, thought it was cool. Uh, we actually, I guess now we'll know for the first time how Ellie is immune. Um, it didn't mature. She basically fully got in her. like a indirectly a vaccine. <laughs> yeah, of. I don't know if it, I don't know if it scientifically can work like that. Um, if so, then maybe wouldn't like babies be vaccinated already? If you're vaccinated, then have baby. I don't know. I don't know. How Ellie, that, ain't, Ellie ain't having a kid. Actually, yeah. If Ellie had a kid, would the kid be immune too? I don't know. I don't know. Ellie can't have any kids because no one likes her at the end of the second game. <laughs> She's all alone. <laughs> right. um, spoilers. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and we, we get all that. It was a really great scene. Um, I, I, I don't like Marlene. <laughs> I think, you know, uh, just, oh, man. She's brutal. very, I mean, like later she on. She has to be selfish, the leader of a but... terrorist group, you know, like right. a rebel terrorist group thing. But uh yeah, and I mean, like, it does, you know, we get how hard it must be for her to break that promise with Anna by basically sacrificing Ellie at the end of this game, or, cho like, choosing to, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, then uh, Joel and Ellie, we get the giraffe scene, works out pretty similar to the game, uh, you know, um, which is great. That was a real giraffe, which, it's funny to cool. me. It's, when I'm watching the thing, I'm like, is the giraffe fake? It just seems fake. No, everything else was fake. <laughs> the giraffe was real. But that's the right. weird inverse of it. Where, yeah. like, because the giraffe seemed different, it must be the fake thing and said it was the opposite, you know? Um, they were just staring at blue squares. <laughs> you know, all this <laughs> giraffe from, you know, several feet below them stuck its head up and they fed it, you know. Maybe they fed it blue grass and it wasn't even real. The thing died. Who knows? Yeah. Um... We skip the underpass segment with all the infected where they throw you like several bloaters and just a bunch of clickers. We didn't need any of that, but we do change how Ellie and Joel are taken by fireflies. I don't know if you remember this. In the game, Ellie can't swim. And there's several of these boring segments where you have to like float around and grab stuff. You know, and this underpass, you're fighting through the, the zombies, the clickers, and you get to this part where you need a shimmy through like a bus or like on top of a thing, and there's rushing water below you. Ellie falls, Joe goes after Ellie's drowned, and he's mm -hmm. given her CPR, and that's when the fireflies come and he tells them to basically fuck off. He's not gonna put his hands up because she's dying. Um that was powerful. And that then makes the transition between them and then what happens immediately in the hospital feel more realistic than they were knocked out by concussive grenades and they just decided not to sit down and have a chat first you know what i mean because she could have been out for a long time he could have been out for uh, you know what i mean and it felt different but 
to put what the show does, we don't know that Joel killed him, tried to kill himself. That whole conversation there was very powerful and fits into what the ending theme of the show is, or at least like you understand, like when she says time heals all wounds and he says, no, it didn't. And he doesn't straight up say what did or if it did at all. But the answer of if it did, it's family, it's connections and it's her. You know what I mean? It's like like, he literally (laughs) straight up basically says, I was going to kill myself because I had nothing. And now he has something and he's not going to let it go. He's just not. Um, what did you think about this whole like hospital? Yeah, stuff? I honestly forgot how they got captured. Once again, like it's been a mi- very long time. I played since the I played. game like five times, so I do remember a lot of it. I mean, what's funny is I when I was playing the game, I first started at my cousin's house in Germany, and then got like to Colorado, the area, and that's when I stopped. And then I had a, it was like years later before I actually went through again, and. You know me, I take me, it takes me forever to finish a goddamn video game. And I remember I stopped, like, right at the hospital, like, when he's about to, like, go find Ellie. And I thought, I'm like, oh, this isn't even close to the end of the game. So, like, I stopped, oh, like, no. one night. And then I had, like, literally 20 minutes left. And I was so mad because then I'm, like, I kind of, like, didn't get that, like, holy shit ending. I was like, wait, what? This is the end of the game? Oh. So it didn't really hit me, but, like, overall. It happened to me once in a video game before. Right, I just I was between. so mad at myself for just like not powering through that one night or pausing earlier or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, that's always so the I don't really remember. Do you stop early or do you power through? Yeah, right. Um, and so I guess overall, like the ending was always kind of fuzzy in my head. I just remember kind of what the ending was. Um, so for me, I like I I thought it was good in the sense of how they got captured. I mean, I feel like it just shows that like they look at at first he looked at Elia's cargo as well, and and they still do up to this point and she's like okay Joel, you did your job goodbye basically um and yeah. then when she's telling he starts asking more probing questions you know that's when he realizes he needs to do something and um yeah and then the whole like yeah almost like the scar on his head and i thought that was yeah just showing once again the mental health of all this um and i think that i don't know if without the covid pandemic uh you know we're currently in uh without that happening uh i maybe i think they don't wouldn't have gone that direction with like the mental health once again going back to even just a couple episodes ago where i feel like when last of us came out it's more like yeah it's just it's the trauma of like killing people is what also you know is that's why his mental health it is with that i think it's also just like all the people he's killed but also losing his daughter also uh just dealing with him being alone and him being regretting everything. And like, you know, with like the pandemic, people did lose family members and whatnot uh, IRL. So I think that's looking at from that with that retrospectively, I think that's why they kind of maybe went that talking about that uh, more in, in it. So I really did like that. Um, but yeah, the Terminator, we talked about at the top of the, the show, just like the Terminator thing where he's just going yeah. through and like, just, there's dudes who are clearly surrendering. He kills them. Then he kills the main doctor. And I saw you know, people on Twitter being like, no, Joel, don't do it. Like people who've played the <laughs> second game, like, yeah. don't do it, Joel, let him live. <laughs> my my theory, do- my theory on that is that doctor wasn't important when they made the original game. And then, and then they-, they found because you have to kill him because otherwise he knifes you and you just, you just lose or whatever. Um, because you have to do it because I played, I played through the game on grounded mode twice. The hardest difficulty when I got to the hospital, I didn't fight anyone. I just ran. It was easier that way. You don't have to kill any of them except him. And I think when planning the sequel, they're like, oh, well, that's interesting. We can make a story. We can, we can tie that in. That's my theory. Mm. And um, someone was saying how um, there, when they show the, the dead doctor on the, the ground, the quick music that plays there is uh, based off the second game. So. Oh, is it? I have to. Yeah, that's what I'm told. I haven't seen the episode again. To verify. Well, I also know the actor for Abby is one of the nurses, and she was one of the nurses in the game. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so she is both literally returning and also an Easter egg for the sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laura um, Bailey. So, um, but yeah, I just yeah, him just coming in, and the guy's like, "Don't you know?" He holds up the scalpel and just pops him. I, that's just brutal. Uh, and he grabs Ellie, and then yeah, I really liked the the. 
ending with Marlene there where it, I, yeah, I think in the game from what I remember, like I said, my memory is fuzzy on it, but they kind of, yeah, it's kind of more iffy in the game. And this, it definitely is like, he looks malicious when he's yeah. killing Marlene. He, he could have left her there bleeding out. And then, you know, but I feel like the way he, like Pedro Pascal plays Joel, he has this look in his eyes, like, no. And then when he says, he'll just come after her. And, and then boom, it's not, he doesn't even get to, uh, he doesn't even let her think about what he just said. It's boom. It's for himself saying that. That's his rationalization. Yeah. Um, it's quick. He's quick and sudden with it. And I feel like in the game, it's hard to be quick and sudden because you listen to the dialogue and then you're playing the character and you're doing it when they have that liberty with the show where he can be more precise yeah. in what he's doing. Yeah. Um, yep. As you can miss in the video game, obviously that Marlene thing was a cutscene in the game. But like going through the hospital, but I'm saying and everything people, else in general. Yeah, like, like you can miss. Like, it <laughs> you matches die up with the rest over. of his actions yeah. that last scene. And then, yeah, yeah then he's going back to because like in this whole episode, he's much more like laughing and like smiling and like showing like actual like warmth more than any other episode, obviously. And so he goes back to that in the car as soon as she starts waking. Oh, it's just the drugs wearing off, you know. He's and then he's telling her about. Uh, when they're hiking up the mountain to look at the view there um, or get to the uh, back to um, the, the fort Jackson, uh, Jackson hole there um, that like, you know, he's still like almost like telling her how, how great his daughter was and how much like, he's like so glad she like the two almost overdoing great it. friends. Yeah. 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 It, very much overdoing. And I like that he overdoes it. Cause he's just showing like how happy it is, how happy he is. And then, yeah, then you get the, the famous conversation Yep. Um, and I guess it's, I, I did watch like a kind of frame by frame and it's pretty close in execution there. And then once again, it ends with that. And then, yeah. And then Bryn, who didn't remember any of the ending <laughs> at all, uh, she's like, wait, what Two? So I'm like, okay. So even with like this, like there's still the element of like, wait, he, he lied, but then that's it. And then, yeah, do I like I that? So I think it's why it's a great ending because it doesn't end the way that typical type of story would have ended. The fact that people have were like, oh, one of them has to die for the ending, you know, for the show. So people that didn't play the game were like, like, no, well, I'm not going to say either way, but like the ending is very different from what this type of and even if they didn't do a is. second season and this is how it ended, I'm still satisfied. That was like, always the plan, you know, and, so. they, and they decided <laughs> to make a sequel. Um, yeah, I thought it was obviously fantastic. Um and uh, I don't want to talk too much about like Last of Us, like going past this in terms of like you know analysis, but like people, people that how do I want to say this without sounding pretentious and also mean. A lot of people <laughs> I, I mentioned earlier about like um, uh, literary criticism, people paying attention to stories, like not being just plot, but story. What is this about? It's not when media you, like, literacy, but it's it's. I guess media. consumption. Media literacy. literacy is more of like journalistic type of stuff. But you know like what I mean? Criticism, it's the same being kind of able to understand, yeah. But like uh, um, when I ask you, well, what was that movie about? And someone starts saying it's about a guy and they just start talking about the plot. But if the movie very clearly has like a story and themes and a message, that is what the story's about. And then there's the vehicles of these characters, right? Um, a lot of people that, that don't necessarily maybe have that or just, have or never had a need to to they don't engage in stories that way which is fine you don't have to you know you know and M the mcu type of stuff doesn't help in that regard you know what i mean after right. the game came out and people were like oh there's going to be a sequel the most basic ideas for a sequel were just thrown around online by all these people and then it's just basically the two of them are going on an adventure again and you know and then like maybe because they're going to find more fireflies and have to be chased by fireflies and i just again i mentioned earlier about how how i was more down on the second game in that review episode we did three years ago than i am nowadays but uh i think it was very cool that the story of the second game is the way it is because they could have just did the boring sequel. Everyone wrote in their heads that makes right. them happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like and this series I'm isn't about happiness anyways. No, so like not at all, not at all. <laughs> You're not um, supposed to feel happy not prolonged at, all, at any happiness. point. <laughs> not prolonged happiness. Just right. enough to keep you going. 
Um, you know, we, we, we've talked for a long time, but I want to make sure we still talk about where we think the second season and possibly third season is going to go. I would not be surprised if it gets renewed for a third season before the second season even airs. Because sometimes shows are like that. If they have a good vibe, as HBO has a good vibe, then they might just renew it again. Can what we just talk think? about that? Thankfully, this is on HBO, who HBO typically doesn't like cancel projects too often in general. Are they like when they say they're renewing something, they follow through on it? Not like fucking Netflix or Hulu. Uh, yeah. So, one, when they say making a second season, I believe it. <laughs> You know, and then, uh, but um, I, I, I mean, what my hope is is that the second season follows the second game from, like, in the second game, follows Ellie's eyes, um, and we it ends with like her catching up to how it does in the second game before it switches to Abby. I think that'd yeah. be cool for our general audiences. Just yeah. have the last episode be like, all right, here's Abby. And then it then it cuts, and then like you have to wait two more years for the next thing. Now here's my prediction: they will mm-hmm. do, they will film seasons two and three back to back, and we will get them a year apart. That's my prediction. Maybe, maybe. And um, I also think that you know, the Ellie section and the Abby section are still shorter than the entire first game, so I think they'll be less than nine episodes each. I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, here's like, my hunch why I think it will be, um, okay, or why it could be cool is one. Once again, if you're still listening to this and you, <laughs> you somehow missed it, yeah, Joel's going to die. Um, I think Joel, if Joel dies, it's going to be in the first, second episode. Maybe the first episode's kind of being like, look, everything's okay. And it's like kind of showing like, you know, what's happened since. Maybe we'll get the them traveling together. Uh, I know like they hunt together or whatever, right? Um, him and Tommy or Joel and Tommy, I think, right? Something That's like a that. flashback. Okay, whatever. Um, but but yeah. my here, this goes back to my thing is that when Joel dies, there's gonna be flashbacks still. Because you're you can't not have Pedro Pascal in the the Pascal. Yeah, there's sons. there's at least uh, two <laughs> major flashbacks Ellie has. One when she's at Last of Us Part One age, where they're going through the dinosaur museum, right. um, and then the other one where she's a little bit older and it's moodier, um, and they go through like yeah. the, ho- the but I think there'll be more. Is what I'm trying to th- say. I think there could be more. Interesting. Not every okay. episode, but I can see like episode five in the middle. It just is a full flashback. Maybe it's the dinosaur thing that. or whatnot. Uh, and for the final it, episode of the third season, they'll have him back again because the second game ends with a flashback of her forgiving him. You yeah. Know? So, cause I, it, yeah, it would be... It just felt like when I was playing the game, it, like there was flashbacks, but it still felt like not enough, you know, from what I was expecting, um, which I'm fine with. But I feel like if you're going to have... This is a TV show and one of your star actors is one of the biggest stars on the planet right now that you're not going to like have limited scenes with him in it. You're right. just not. There's a you reason why uh, Mandalorian spoilers for uh, the Mandalorian Boba Fett, all that stuff like that. The Mandalorian just starts becoming involved in the Boba Fett more than Boba Fett is even in it. <laughs> the last really? couple episodes because they're like, Oh yeah, everyone likes Pedro Pascal. So we need to bring him back <laughs> even though he's not involved. Uh, so yeah, I I just from that point of view, I think they're gonna try to fit him in more, um, in some way. But yeah, I I, I think it'd be smart to do the the way. But I also can see them if they do a second season, maybe it's them going back and forth. I hope not. Um, yeah. or maybe there's something else that they they that maybe, uh, uh, Neil and and yeah, maybe didn't want to put in the game or something that maybe there's a whole yeah. other story that we don't even know. Maybe it's a kind yeah. of more of a filler season um until i, I get the feeling based off comments neil made that um they're really only contracted with hbo for just to literally the, games, the stories right? of the two games and nothing else so like you know but I, who knows anything can change obviously they are right now deciding what they want to do you know what i mean yeah um but i personally can see five episodes for season two and it's ellie and then another five for abby maybe, maybe a sixth episode that is the culmination of the two you know, with that, uh, yeah, it really depends if they're gonna, they epilogue. really want to, if they're only gonna do a second season. That I, I just have a feeling it's gonna be part one, it has to be two seasons. They, they've said the story is too big for one season, so like they're not gonna do one season. And if they only do one season, it's gonna end unsatisfyingly with just one side of the story, you know what I mean, right? But I'm excited. I mean, Bella's the same age now as uh, Ellie is in last was part two so like she can do it fine 
they need to find yeah. and they need to find an Abby and they need to find Adina. They need to find um shit. What's the dude's name? Uh, that's Dina's uh as the, the kid with oh, Dina. I forgot his name, but yeah, yeah, it was Ellie's friend. Yeah, yeah, they need to find him. Um, yeah, the Pascal Nassance. Pascal Nassance. Maybe just the pa- the Pedro Nassance. Pascal Pascal Nassance. Pa- Pascal Nassance. I got it now. I think we did it. Pascal. Is- we did. <laughs> um, when do you think it'll come out, though? I think that's my last question. Is uh, considering 25. how. Because I think it took him two years, really, to film this in between The Mandalorian. and I think it's more in Pedro's schedule, right? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know when they're going to start filming this, but... My prediction if you're the is same they're quality, filming back-to-back, and it'll be 25 and 26. That's my prediction. 2025 and 2026? Yep. No, just the Damn. years 25 and 26. <laughs> <laughs> we're going back in time. Um, I could see that. Maybe late 2024. I just think if they're going to do it, they have to do it by like end of this year. But from the quality that HBO has and with what, uh, uh, you know, just from what the, both these creators put into details. Once again, I, that's one thing I forgot to mention was like this, the details they put into like, you know, things on the floor and whatnot, just like the games. And I think that's what makes the game so exciting is the attention to detail. No PlayStation um, 2s in this show, though. It made me upset. There are PlayStation 3s in the game. PlayStation 2. Or even PlayStation 1, you can make an argument for. They're still around yeah. at that point. In 2003, yeah, there were still a couple PS1 games still coming out. Yeah, it was um, relevant. But yeah, I just I think for that attention to detail and like the the and I want it to be that quality. I'm okay waiting. I now, I'll feel bad I'll feel bad for all the people who won't play the games uh or maybe yeah. will get spoiled. A lot of people then. are just going to end up being spoiled on the second game. I I it just they just are Joel dying is something everyone... We're reviewing HBO's The Last of Us, and we're not even pretending that people that could be watching this are only seeing the show and not the game. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, that's true. I, I, people are just going to get spoiled, which is... I hope, yeah, I hope people who... Uh, I just really hope I didn't. we didn't, like, ruin someone's day. That's my main thing. But, like, I feel like yeah. that's kind of the, the go-to when you're adapting something verbatim. Uh, yeah. But who knows? We could be get... wrong. Maybe they don't. But I, I highly, I would here's put a little money bit of <laughs> of hopium for you. Um, I we don't know how much um, uh, priority filming The Last of Us was for HBO. Maybe the second season can be done faster because they have everything kind of contracted and set and in place, too. and they can just immediately start. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe maybe late next year would work. Maybe it'll I was gonna be say next HBO kind of needs its next big thing, and then this. I don't know what the numbers were for Game of Thrones, but like I said, I feel like this has the for House of the Dragon. Did this do better than that? I don't know. I don't know, but I know that like I'm saying like when early Game of Thrones came out, in the first like two seasons, it wasn't a household name yet. So I'm like, does Last of Us have that potential? But I don't think Last of Us will be you know six seasons long, obviously, unless they're really just making up stuff afterwards, which I I we'll see when we get there if that'd be cool or not. Um, yeah, I have a feeling Naughty Dog's next game is not The Last of Us. Oh no, I think I it's can just be... see those people wanting to make something happy <laughs> and taking a break from depressing games. Yeah, I I still think it's going to be a new thing. Like we all want Jack and Daxter, but it's going to be I think something. I would I would I don't want to you know Im- implicate myself. I was going to say I would kill for a Jack and Daxter game, but you know I'm not going to kill for a Jack and Daxter game. But You're I would kill for a Jack and Daxter. Uh, Jack, Joel my way for through a Jack and Daxter for on Jack PS4. 5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jack 4. Um, That's what's on the bed is a copy of Jack 4. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. When you get in there Here's and there's a, a game developer holding a controller, he's like, <laughs> don't make me do this. He's like, I can, I can delete the game right now. This is the only I got my hand on that B it. button. I'm going to press it. Um, You're like, you better I've not. been holding this like the whole time, by the way. <laughs> It's because you're playing, it you're playing our episode. You know? Yeah, I'm playing the episode. You're doing quick time events. So and I can keep what speaking. a fun episode it was. Thank you guys for watching and listening on YouTube and a variety of places on the internet. My name was Ethan. Devin was over here. You can find us on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and the like. At Sonic Movie Show, you can see our handle right up top there. I'm also on Twitter at Ethan Absolutely, and Devin's on Twitter at Cursona Fun. Let us know what you thought about The Last of Us on HBO. Let us know in the comments below of this video, in the Apple review thing, I guess maybe put it there, or on Twitter or TikTok or whatever. You see all our stuff, like and subscribe and click the things and heart the things and... I guess bookmark now.
Ben and share with your uh, folks who maybe who played the games and then what they think of the show. Maybe don't share yeah. it with people who you know haven't played uh, the gamers games only. For, gamers only. <laughs> That's what the title should be. It should say "Gamers Only HBO's yeah. Last <laughs> Review" or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, we will see you next time for another episode of the Sonic Movie Show. Have a fantastic day. Bye, bye, baby girl.